that are rooted in Islamic knowledge and at the same time, not just transformed, but transformational. And I think that's the legacy as well of Sheikh Muhammad al-Sharif, rahimullah, that he always wanted to invest in people. He always wanted to give more to people. And it wasn't about giving them an maghrib, it was about giving them Islam. And that was his legacy and it continues till this day. And when it comes to al-maghrib, its system has always adjusted to meet its intention. And that's an institution that's worth supporting. It's not just an institution that is surviving the test of time or that has produced obvious results in some of the students of knowledge and some of the people that have gone on to become great people in our community. But it's also in how the organization is always self-critical and asking itself how it can do better at disseminating this item and constantly adjusting with the means and the methods. And so by you supporting it, you give it an opportunity, inshallah ta'ala, to make those adjustments with Ihsan as it continues to engage in that self-critical thought with Ihsan. One thing about Al-Maghrib right now, after 20 plus years of doing this, this beautiful work for Allah Azza wa Jal, we dedicate it to authentic knowledge, Alhamdulillah, also to serious topics and subjects of ilm and knowledge, in addition, of course, to practical things people need on a daily basis for Allah Azza wa Jal. So if there's anything I recommend for people to, uh, uh, to witness, is that the kind of effect the ilm and the knowledge and the companionship and the terbiyah that Al Maghrib provides to its own local communities and to themselves, inshallah. This is a very unique, alhamdulillah, experience. And I want each and every one of you to come and join us with that experience, inshallah. What makes Al Maghrib invaluable in the sphere of Islamic knowledge is the fact that there are so many ways to learn. My personal favorite and the way that I personally learn best is through the in person seminars. And I still attend them even as an instructor. Whenever a seminar comes to Houston, I always go and I really, really enjoy them. And so the idea of being able to have on-site classes, and if you can't access them, being able to access online classes is something that really makes al Maghrib invaluable. Knowledge is, is not informational, it's transformational, right? That the whole purpose of having knowledge isn't just to build our information, but it's to transform. And, and Al-Maghrib is supporting that transformation at an individual level and on a collective level as a community. It is transforming communities. And that's why we really, really need to support Al-Maghrib and the efforts that they are making. All righty, everyone. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Welcome, welcome, welcome to day number 21 of Ramadan 360. Of course, this is the pre-show. This is the, what's the warm-up party, alhamdulillah, I don't know what to call it, um, which is our fatwa night once again with uh, Sheikh Walid Basuni, who is our senior scholar. Welcome, jazakumullah khair to everyone who's made time to be with us early for today's session, alhamdulillah, especially to those of you, I, I know I see quite a few Brits, I see London in the house, mashallah, um, who have had your time changed. So now this is the typical time that you would come in for Ramadan 360 and you're joining us early for the fatwa night, Ramadan 360 for you all. Um, if you're confused, if you didn't know, is going to be in the next hour, inshallah. So I get, I think your clock's mo moved back um, or forward. I can't remember which one, spring back, fall, fall forward, fall string. Anyways, one of the two, they moved uh, and okay, they, they moved forward. Alhamdulillah, and Isa for correcting me as well. Um, but basically your, your time has changed by one, uh, hour. So just keep that in mind for the rest of the Ramadan 360 programming and try to push through with us. I know it's later nights, but the last 10 nights you're up late anyway. SubhanAllah, make us part of your nightly ibadah. Uh, and shout out to all of you, mashallah, from different corners of the globe who've already been doing that from the Philippines to Malaysia to Singapore uh, to everywhere to Australia who've been tuning in in the middle of the night or, you know, your sahur or fajr time just to incorporate this ibadah into your routines. Mashallah, tabarakallah. Let me quickly give you guys the ability to turn on your camera so I can see your lovely faces. I know by now the energy starts to wane and it starts to get harder and harder and harder to maintain the consistency. So shout out to all of you who have been doing your utmost to be here, to be attentive, to be on camera. Shout out to Hadra. I actually saw Hadra a couple of days ago. This is the beautiful thing about these diverse, alhamdulillah, communities. Mashallah, bumped into her at the masjid at uh, Sheikh Suleiman Hani's talk and hope to see her and other parts of the community, inshallah, and Sheikh Amar's uh, presence here in Toronto tonight as well. Um, I, it's so lovely, actually. Mashallah, Sheikh Suleiman Hani was talking about it yesterday, and 
um, one of the coolest things is having such an international kind of community is that I go anywhere, subhanAllah, and in so many corners of the globe, in Europe, in the Far East, and at in random times in the airport, in the on the trains and random places, we end up meeting parts of the Amagra family. So if you ever see me locally, I know some people tend to be a little bit awkward. Hajar, mashallah, just came up to me because I know her. Um, so please do say hi. Please do connect, inshallah. It really brightens my day, alhamdulillah. With that said, we're going to be starting in a couple of minutes with our Fatwa Night with Sheikh Walid. You guys did a phenomenal job last week with the Fatwa Night that we had. Asked amazing questions uh, that were a really nice variety as well so that everyone got a chance to benefit, alhamdulillah. And we're going to do more of the same. So the what work, so what we do with the Fatwa Nights is that we uh, allow you guys to submit questions ahead of time through your student portal. And I think it's emailed to you guys as well. Um, your student portal uh, has a little hand raise icon on top of the video with Sheikh Sunan Manhani. And when you click on that icon, it takes you to the Q&A form that we have. So you submit your questions there. You can also submit them now. Don't worry, you haven't lost the opportunity, inshallah. I'm just going to open it up and reshare that link with you guys so that you can, you guys can, inshallah, um, still submit questions. Oh, I tried. I sent, took a screenshot instead of sharing the link. Give me one second. So you can still submit questions, inshallah. And then you can um, uh, have them asked with Sheikh Wali today, inshallah. Um, so basically, we want to keep questions to top to the topic of Ramadan. Obviously, the fic around Ramadan, any specific kind of areas that you're struggling with or specific scenarios that you're not sure exactly how to apply uh, or specific answers to. So please try to be mindful of that, inshallah. I'm going to share that here right now in the chat. My Bluetooth keyboard doesn't work, so just bear with me for one second. There you go, Q&A form. And of course, the lovely people in the community always come through and reshare the form when others are coming in and confused. If you see someone dropping a question in the chat, uh, please do send them the form as well, and I'll do my best to do so, so that we can keep things organized. We can be fair to those who submitted their questions earlier, uh, and we can take them within kind of the within the order that they were received. Now, some questions were answered in depth. So we had two Q&As previously. We had one with Sheikh Omar Hadruj, uh, who's also a specialist in fiqh, mashallah. Um, um, and one of our youngest, our newest instructors, alhamdulillah. And then we had one with Sheikh Wali Bisuni last week. We've had a lot of questions that were submitted since, but some of them have been answered already. Um, so we're just going to, if it's been answered, we're just going to refer you guys to go back to the previous form. Rabia, no, you can submit to the form, I think, multiple times, inshallah. So you don't have to worry about that. Um, just make sure that uh, if you've already submitted a question, you don't resubmit the same question because it's already been saved for us to ask in a future Q&A if it hasn't been asked already. Um, and obviously the, the, the recordings for these sessions are already up on your student portal. So you guys can find answers to the previous questions, inshallah. Oh, okay, Rabia, good, good, good question. Let me check the the form uh, settings and make sure that you guys can submit again, inshallah. But uh, I have I see multiple people submitting. I see people submitting multiple questions, so it shouldn't be changed. But I'll double check that for you, inshallah. That said, are we ready, inshallah? Especially with the last ten nights having kicked off, inshallah. I know there's quite a few questions that come up about Laylatul Qadr, about ibadah during the last ten night, about itikaf, about zakah for those who are, uh, you know, doing it, about the twenty seventh night, all these kind of things. I know, mashallah, we have a lot of questions pending, so I want to make sure that we get a chance to uh, cover some of those as well. But we'll try to prioritize some more of these last ten night focused questions, and then anything that we've missed in previous Q and A's. I see that Sheikh Walid has joined us. Alhamdulillah, Sheikh Walid Basuni, welcome back to Ramadan three six. You've been uh, doing a marathon, actually, mashallah. Yesterday, you had the webinar that we had on accepted da'a. I hope that you guys had a chance to tune into that. If not, the recording is up. It was a phenomenal few hours. We spent so many motivational, uh, you know, inspirational shares and, and quotes and, and uh, reflections from our shiukh, alhamdulillah. And then, of course, we had Ramadan 360 with Sheikh Walid yesterday as well on the topic of nasiha and advice. And now we're back again with Fatwa night, alhamdulillah. So, Sheikh, we're keeping you busy. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. How are you doing today? Alhamdulillah, alaykum as wa rahmatullah. It is my pleasure and I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the opportunity to serve um, uh, those, mashallah, wonderful brothers and sisters who've been um, uh, with us for, for some of them for years, alhamdulillah, in our Maghrib journey. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from all of us our good deeds. Amen. And no doubt, one of the best things that the person can do during Ramadan yeah. is to share the knowledge and mm -hmm. to attend a circle of knowledge and to learn. As Al Imam al-Shafi used to say, I don't think there is anything more rewarding after fulfilling the obligations like seeking knowledge. Mm -hmm. And so we ask Allah SWT to make us among those who seek knowledge. Mm -hmm. and, and just a quick thing to remind, I know everybody knows that the last 10 days started mm -hmm. um, yesterday for those who start on Monday fasting, those started Tuesday, tonight is the first night. Mm -hmm. 
And I want to say that these 10 nights, yani we say, الشهر مضى معظمه most of the month gone وبقي أعظمه and the most important of it remained which is the last 10 days so make sure that you take good care of yourself your family النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم in the last 10 days كان يوقظ أهله للصلاة he make sure that his family pray and wake them up to pray and make sure that they uh, uh, يعني Pray extra than the rest of Ramadan. As we say, you cannot make your days uh, in the year similar to your days of Ramadan. And you cannot be the day of fasting in Ramadan similar to the day outside Ramadan. It has to be, there is a difference. It has to be a different yani, uh, commitment to ibadah, increase in ibadah, and dhikr, and dua, and sadaqah, and so forth, uh, and behavior. And the same thing I would say, the last 10 days, has to be different than the rest of Ramadan. And in Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, as it's reported of Sahih, I think it's the local Muslim, that كان يشتهد في رمضان ما لا يشتهد في في العشر الأواخر ما لم يشتهد في غيره من الشهر. He will increase his ibad, his commitment. He increases worship during the 10, month, 10 days of Ramadan uh, more than the rest of Ramadan. And it will be different, very noticeable. كان يشد مئزرة tied his clothes on because of the amount of salah he does صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم من عباده and also يجتهد يحيي الليل pray most of the night صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم and the Nabi Sassam used to make a tikaf in the last 10 days of Ramadan in the, in the end of his life and the Imam Zuhri رحمه الله said عجبا I'm surprised how Muslims have abandoned the sunnah of tikaf even in Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, never missed a tikaf since he moved to Medina, Sallallahu Alaihi wa Wasallam. And Zuhri, by the way, lived in the successor. He's among the successors, you know, or the young successor. Um, and the early in age in Islam, people get busy. I understand that. But you, at least you can make a tikaf during the weekend. You get tikaf most after you finish your work, you go stay in the masjid, make iftar in the masjid, and stay there. You can sleep in the night while you're having empty cap, but stay in the masjid and, and commit yani, a good portion of your day and your night uh, for salah and ibadah and dhikr and reading Quran. Um, those who have not finished the khatm al-Quran yet, hurry up, speed up your recitation, your listening for the Quran. So by the end of the month, you already finished the Quran, reading the whole entire Quran at least once. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala except from all of us. And I want to show you how uh, uh, beautifully the early generation used to honor these 10 nights, seeking Laylat al-Qadr, that some of them even would have a special cloth that they would wear in these in the nights that they think it's the night of Laylat al-Qadr, like the 21st, 23rd, 27th. Tamimi Dari purchased a, 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 a cloth that he would put on worth 4,000 dirham. It's a lot of money, a lot of money. And he said, I like to dress very nice and when, because this is the night where Allah sent Jibreel. Jibreel, the one who was sent only to Muhammad, Allah sent him to you. It was sent to Muhammad and to the prophets and the messenger to bring the most valuable thing, which is the wahi, the revelation, Allah's words. Allah sent him down for us in Laylat al-Qadr. And in his company, the angels. Some narrations, as many as the grain of the sand, the sand, the grain of the sands and the drops of the rain in this earth. Billions of them. For what? To make dua for you. For what? To ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept from you. Say ameen to your dua. So make sure that when they come down, they found us in, in a state and, and in a position that we are worth of that dua. Some of them used to make, take a shower every night before they go to pray taraweeh or be, before maghrib. Why all this is to prepare themselves psychologically and physically. And as we all know, our physiology impacts our psychology. How you carry yourself, how you smell, how you look like, how you dress. It impacts how you feel. And the best of all this is to make sure that you 
careful dua in Nabi Sallam. Allahumma inna ka afun tuhibbu al-afwa fa'afu anni. Or to say, Allahumma inna sa'aluka al-afwa wa al-afiyah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us al-afwa wa al-afiyah. And inshallah, now we can start with your question. Sakullah. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Jazakumallah khair, Shaykh, um, for that beautiful reminder. And to everyone, mashallah, who's been joining us and who's present now for uh, our early Ramadan 360 session today with our first Fatwa night. Um, a reminder, once again, for those who've joined us, because I know there's been a, a, an uptick since we started, we're taking qu questions from the Q&A form that is on your student portal, and that will be dropped periodically here in the chat on Zoom. If you're coming on YouTube, make sure you, you swap over to Zoom on Ramadan360.org if you haven't signed up already, so that you're able to submit your questions, inshallah. Um, we'll be taking them roughly by order, but more importantly, by theme as well, to cover the themes that are most relevant for you guys in the last 10 nights, and as we guys, as we wrap up our you know, the blessed month of Ramadan. And we're doing our very best. If the question has been answered before, if that theme has been covered extensively, we'll try to, to move on to different questions, but we'll be as equitable as we possibly can, inshallah, in this scenario. Um, please, as once again, you guys have been amazing so far. If someone is coming in in the chat, please remember we're not taking questions from the chat, but if there's a clarification that you have on something that Sheikh is speaking on directly at the moment, you can put that in the chat briefly and we can see if we can take it at that time. With that, Sheikh, are you ready for the questions? Bismillah. Bismillah. Okay, let's jump in. So the first question that I have is, I understand that we are allowed to finish eating or drinking what we're already eating or drinking when the Fajr Adhan is called. Is there a time at which you have to stop? I was drinking water and it took me longer than I thought it would to finish. And it was a few minutes after Fajr. Is my fast still valid or do I need to make it up or do kafara? Uh, you finish eating and drinking when you hear the Adhan. If you know that the Adhan is called on time. Or if your clock says it's, uh, then it's 6.02, 6.02 you stop. Okay. But let's say the Adhan called and 6.02 comes while you are drinking. Just finish whatever in your hand. If it's a sip, if it's a, like, you know, um, um, just a little bit, you, you, you finish it. If it's just a bite, finish it, swallow it, and, and that's it, stop. But don't drag it while the Adhan is going. Mm -hmm. And if you, you did you do that uh whatever you've done in the past is based on ignorant you don't know uh, so inshallah it's forgiven but in the in the, in the future be accurate Nabi Sallallahu said when you hear the adhan you stop eating and drinking so when you hear the adhan you stop when the time enter you stop okay, yes. okay. perfect um, I'll have another look at the form link, by the way, guys, inshallah, for those who are struggling, inshallah, and I'll come back to you guys. Um, the, for, the next question is, I lose my temper at times during Ramadan. I get angry at my kids and my husband. I try very hard not to and always remember to ask forgiveness as soon as it happens. Do I get punished for this? I don't know what anger uh, translate to. If it's translate to transgression, if it translate to using bad words. Yeah, and you need to make tawbah from it, and you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant you sabr and try to learn how to control your um, reactions. Um, and by the way, uh, I want to say that anger is, is one of the common reasons for marriage and relationships to be destroyed. Um, when a person, get, when a husband always gets angry and a wife gets angry all the time, they just building, putting bricks over each other. Every time it happens, there's a bricks put until you have a wall between you and your spouse or a wall between you and your children. But they cannot communicate with you anymore. You just turn them off, turn them away. And I do believe this is one of the most common reasons for divorces to take place and relationships to be cut off and to be a bad relationship with children and parents. That, that anger. Try to uh, seek help, professional help, therapist, you know, and um, and this is a very common problem, and you're not the only one who's struggling with that, but it, it needs to require for the person to train themselves to help, to seek professional help. Uh, and it is a work in progress. I agree with on that. Um, and you talk to your spouse, talk to your children, tell them, hey, I get angry, and you know, please, uh, I'm trying and help me. Uh, what are the things that cause anger? What are the things that make you angry? If it's certain time, certain actions, try to talk to them about it while you are calm. If you want to make the worst speech in your, in your life, 
and the worst decision in your life, just make it while you are angry. Uh, they, they say anger is one letter away from danger. Um, and it is That's something that you should avoid. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help you. And remember, the Nabi sallallahu said, فَإِنْ غَضَبَهُ أَحَدًا Someone make you angry, say, Allah, من يصائم. Somebody do something that make you angry, just say, I'm fasting. Fasting person, control himself. Just remind yourself of that. And make a lot of dua. Uh, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for you and help you to control your anger and take your anger away and replace it with calmness and uh, compassion. Ameen, Ya Rabbul Alameen. The next question is, and this is actually a follow-up to an answer that you gave last week, Sheikh. Um, and it's, in the past, some of our zakah was paid by cash, some by e-transfer, some by credit card. Do we need to go back and calculate and give an amount to cover the credit card fees? Or do we just pay extra starting from the next year? No, you go back and trace whatever missing in the zakat to fulfill it. And you might say, Sheikh, it's going to be hard to keep track. You do your best. Then the increasing amount of sadaqah, the sadaqah that you do, it will patch whatever uh, yeah, I mean, amount that you couldn't figure out. But if you can figure out something, you make an estimate, you do. But your other sadaqah, it's like when you your salah, Sometimes our salah is not complete. It's not perfect. Missing things, do some mistakes, gotten thing. Your extra volunteer prayer, patch whatever missing from your salah. Our volunteer fast, patch whatever missing from our siyam. If it's not perfectly done. Same thing with the zakat. Our sadaqat, patch whatever missing from our sadaq, umrah, and so on. Um, the extra volunteer hajj and so forth. It patched the obligations. So my my advice to you, you, you try your best and you come up with a number. And if you couldn't, that's my best estimate. Maybe there is more, maybe there's less. Inshallah, your general sadaqah will cover and make up for whatever missing from your zakat. Inshallah. Uh, the next question is, there's a couple questions about making up missed fasts and they're from different people. So I'll still take them. Um, one is if I missed fasting in junior high and high school during my menstrual cycle for six years. I'm not sure if I made up those fasts. Do I need to make up those fasts or pay fidya? No, you have to make up these fasts. If you were balagh, you reached the age of puberty at that time, you have to make up these days. And you can divide them like in the winter time when the days are short, but you have to make them up. Making um, uh, paying fidya is not sufficient. Paying, paying fidya only for someone who is sick and cannot, and there is no healing for his sickness, and he cannot fast because of that sickness, or a pregnant woman, or a breastfeeding woman. Uh, so that's number one. Number two, some ulama said also you should pay fidya as a penalty for delaying making it up over a year. But I do believe that penalty is just sunnah. It's just recommended. Ibn Abbas said that, but there's nothing in the sin of the Prophet in regard to this. But it is just a recommended thing to feed a, a, a poor person per day. You missed, but it's just recommended. But what's must is to make up these days. And again, you do your best estimate and you, you fast these days. Yes. Another on making up fast. So again, um, if a woman didn't practice Islam, born Muslim, but family didn't practice, and she started practicing in her 20s, does she have to make up Miss Fast from the time that she got her cycle? Would that be the same response then, Shaykh? Um, if, she, if she was not practicing Islam, she was not praying at all, that means she was not a Muslim. And by starting praying and, and entering Islam and, and doing the obligation, that she, that's when she became a Muslim. That's a different case a little bit. Okay. Um, um, so basically, um, in this case, she doesn't need to make up, but she needs to make a lot of toba, a lot of stuff. Out. But no, if she's a Muslim, she prays sometimes. She also has to make up these days. Uh, there is another opinion. Uh, yani, uh, I will go to that opinion. Yani, uh, Let's say this has became like, hey, I have 10 years of some of Ramadan that I have to make. Okay, 10 years of days of Ramadan I have to make. That's like, you know, like 10 months, like almost a year. And this became so difficult. 
There is an opinion among uh, some of the Hanabira, and that's a choice of Shaykh Islam Bitimi Rahimahullah and Shaykh Matimi Rahimahullah in modern days, uh, saying that if somebody uh, break his fast intentionally, like I just didn't fast intentionally, uh, they cannot make up that day. They will meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with that day missing in the record. And because making up a day was uh, ordained or legislated for those who miss it for a valid reason. But if you miss it for a, a reason which is not valid, that will not be uh, allowed. And you just get it to miss the day and you know, make it up later on. No, you can't. It's not up to you. If you miss the right time, you miss the right time. You you deal with with that in the day of judgment. The only way to to make, to deal with this is by making a sincere tawbah and to increase your volunteer fasting and to perfect your siyam. To make tawbah, to perfect your siyam now, and to increase your volunteer. So if it has been accumulating for six, seven, eight years, too many years, and it became hard for you. Taking that opinion is not also something that it is wrong. And you focus from now on, now on and you repent to Allah Taala, and you perfect your fasting. So those two opinions, both are very good arguments. The majority on the first position, and Shaykh al-Islam and one narration among the Hanabila took that second opinion, which is also very strong, valid argument. Um, the next question is, uh, by the way, sometimes uh, some questions are asked where the the person is referring to a specific speaker or a specific personality. In that case, uh, we don't try to to compare to to say the name of the speaker, but we will ask the question still, just because I I noticed that that in a couple of questions, and I know there are valid concerns or valid questions, so we'll still ask them. But we don't like to pit speakers against each other or to make them compare or to disavow something that another speaker has said. Um, so the are next you welcome question... to put me against Abu I mean, <laughs> yeah, that, no, if it's Abu Isa, don't worry. I'll make sure I'll make sure I specify. I'm like Abu Isa, Na'matullah said. But no, it's not Abu Isa. Don't worry. Um, the question is, I just heard a sheikh saying that in, in one of his clips that it's discouraged to have unnecessary baths during Itikaf. Please explain. Thank you. Uh, the only reason I said Abu Isa because I always respect his opinion. Okay. Love, uh, um, and love his uh May Allah SWT give him barakah in his family and, and his health and Ameen. his wealth and uh, benefit the ummah of the knowledge and all my colleagues and friends and my mother instructors. Um, uh, going back to, to your question, uh, I don't know any base for that, but maybe whoever said that it is because taking too many baths, you know how people spend so much time in bathrooms and uh, showers and Maybe somebody have to go to the nest to the home, take shower and come back. So take away more time from the atikaf. But in general, you are allowed to take a bath while you're making atikaf or while you're fasting. Perfect. Um, the next question is, is there a specific, and I know, so I want to specify, I know we don't want to take too many like, like non Ramadan related questions, but the topic of menstruation comes up many times because it impacts people's fasting. So we will take many of those. Um, the question is, is there a specific number of days that a woman must wait before considering ongoing menstrual bleeding as is the Hada? Uh, in some, many, in some videos, uh, another Sheikh mentioned it is 15 days. And after that you count, uh, is the Hada, please clarify. Fifteen days is an opinion among the Shafi'iyya um, and some other fuqaha. They said that the maximum hayd is fifteen days, but I lean towards the opinion that there is no uh, maximum days or minimum days for hayd. As long as you can recognize the hayd and you can identify it, it is hayd. Um, uh, so that's that's what it seems to be. There's no really any strong argument or proof for the fifteen except the hadith of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that, um, uh, that a woman, uh, yani, uh, half of her deen, and he meant a salah, because she leaves the salah for half of the month. And uh, they said the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gave that example as the maximum days. But uh, the hadith does not say that the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he made that statement that the woman, uh, half of the month, do not pray, 
he doesn't mean that every woman is like that, obviously. And he doesn't make it that as a, as a statement to make the maximum versus minimum or anything of that nature. So that argument, in my opinion, is weak. Um, um, so as long as you can identify the help, uh, the period, you, you stop praying and fasting. And when you um, when you cannot identify, it became very confusing. You can identify it through the color, through the smell, through it. it's a very very similar. Cannot cannot really identify it. In this case, we say, look at the, the, what the Prophet ﷺ said. He said, uh, leave six or seven days. Or, yani, based on uh, what is what is your adha before? What is the um, regular menses that you said you had before? Is it seven days? It's eight days. Khalas, you stop eight days. Nine days, nine days. And after the nine days, you take a shower and you consider what after that is bleeding. Okay, um, if you don't have a, a regular, some women don't have, they are too young or like uh, it's been like because of surgery or because of breastfeeding, there is no regular menses at all. In this case, we see, look at the closest person to you, your sister, some of your family, somebody who have the same body weight and same, live in the same place. What is the, you choose just a number and you go by that until you build a, a, a habit and a cycle and you were able to uh, to identify the hate from the bleeding and alhamdulillah the issue is not yeah, I, 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 it's easy for me as a man to say it's not a, a, as hard as people might because I don't ex I don't experience that but I know it's very stressful for sisters and um I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to reward you guys for that and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for you. But alhamdulillah, if you choose that and you, you make that as your cut-off date, alhamdulillah, and you take a shower, you can so you can pray and after until you build another uh, cycle and, and a regular menses. Um, someone's asking in the chat, is this opinion from the majority, the three other schools? Which one? Uh, the, the one uh, I just chose, uh, that I chose. Yes. Um, the word majority is a tricky word. There's no, yani, everybody can claim majority. But uh, no, these the four madhab have a very different approach to this issue. But the opinion that I just told you, yes, it is what the majority of, uh, of the scholars will yani, agreed upon. And it will go alongside the madhab. Yes. Beautiful. Jazakallah khair, um, the next question is, I didn't pray with her having the intention of praying it at the end of the night when I woke up. Um, when I woke up, I was menstruating. Do I have to make up my wither? No, wither is sunnah. It's not wajib because the Nabi saw Sallam said to Al-Aqra ibn Habis when he said, Ya Rasulullah, your messenger said that um, Allah only uh, made it obligatory on us to pray five times a day. Anything else than that is volunteer. Is that true? He said yes. So anything other than the five daily prayer is volunteer. So, but you can make up the waiter. Even you can make up the volunteer acts. Nabi Sallam made up the waiter. Nabi Sallam made up the Sunnah uh, al-Dhuhr. You, you can make up the word of Quran that you missed because you were busy. Okay? So you can make up the Sunnah. You can make up Sunnah al-Fajr. So you can make it up after you finish your period, but it's not obligated. You are not obligated. The next question is, I can't, uh, sorry, she couldn't attend the previous fatwa night. She's asking, I know more ayah of the Quran for the, for Tzarawih than my brothers and my mother. My brothers only know the Fatiha. How can we pray together in this case? Uh, individually, or your brother can hold the Mus'haf and read from it. I mean, there is an opinion that uh, a woman can lead men in taraweeh from behind. Like she would be in the behind and she'd be leading the salah. But I, I don't feel comfortable with that opinion. But it is an opinion, uh, some scholars, only in taraweeh. If there is nobody, read Quran. But Aisha knows more Quran than anyone else. And when she prayed behind her servant, 
she let her servant read from the Mus'haf and she prayed behind him. Yes. Perfect. Um, the, the next question is, um, okay, I'm, I'm having trouble with the reset. I wanted to ask from Sheikh that what are the, oh, sorry, what are the ihkam for women who have kids at home and want to do itikaf? And here we don't have any proper masajid for men, for women, so they can't do it at the masjid. If you can't do it in the masjid, alhamdulillah, you're, you're not obligated or you're not asked to do it. Inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you for intention. But the itikaf only in the masjid. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, wa antum aakifuna fil masajid. The itikaf is in the masjid and must be done and it cannot be in the house. But you can dedicate sometimes in your time to the ibadah, to the salah, to the Quran. In the masjid, you can go wait from, let's say you pray dhuhr and you stay there until maghrib or from maghrib until fajr. Or, you know, and if you have kids, it might be hard. Maybe if they are in the school, you can go at, after fajr after you drop them off in school and stay in the masjid until asr time. And that became your itikaf time. That's fine. Beautiful. Um, the next question is, uh, on Layat al Qadr night, our good deeds are multiplied, but are our sins multiplied as well if we've, uh, if we've done any? There is a debate between the scholars if sins ever can be multiplied. And the opinion that I lean towards that it will not be multiplied, except maybe one case in, in Mecca. Uh, some of the Sahaba said, that the sin in Mecca equal to a hundred sin outside Mecca. But what I do believe that the sins in can not be multiplied by, but can be, there is a greater punishment for it in certain situations. So if you commit a sin in the time, which is a time of virtue, like Ramadan, like Layt al-Qadr, like the last third of the night, 10 days of Ramadan, 10 days of the hijjah last 10 days of Ramadan, during Ramadan in general, this this sin you punish for it more than doing the same sin outside Ramadan or outside that time. The sin you do it in Mecca or in Haram or inside the masjid, it is the punishment for it more than doing it outside the masjid or outside this virtual place, Mecca, Medina, Masjid Al Aqsa. You follow? And the sin of the scholars is way worse than the sin of the lame person. The sin of the person who have, who openly make the sin and he, he doesn't care, we jah, doesn't care and he openly do it, no shame. The punishment is way worse than someone who do the same sin, but in private and, and, and he's shameful of himself. Okay. So uh, that's why Nabi Sallallahu said, لا يدخل الجنة, not enter Jannah, uh, uh, an old man who is an adulterer. That verses did not come. Why older man versus young man? Because older man is more shameful. There is no, there is no, the desire is not as strong as the young man. Both haram, but the sin is much more punishable for this older man. A, a king who's a liar, a lying is sin for everybody, but a king who lie, president who lie, prime minister who lie, worse. Why? Because he deceived nations, because he doesn't need to lie. Is powerful enough to say the truth, and so on. So these make the sin not multiplied, but the punishment is greater. Yes. We're racing these through these questions, mashallah. The next question is, um, can a woman read the Quran with wudu, but without their hair covered? Can a woman read Quran without wudu or without with, hair cover? Yes. With wudu, without hair covered. Uh, with wudu or without wudu, she can read Quran uh, and her hair covered or not covered. This is not salah. If you want to do that out of respect and show your respect to the Quran, good. It is not a condition or required. There's nothing in this another process that required that. Um, the next question is, I'm diabetic and I struggle by the afternoon with terrible chest pain when I fast. Is it best to persevere for the sake of Allah or is it sufficient to pay fidya? You can pay fidya, but you consult your doctor. If there's a Muslim doctor, you can consult and to ask them. Then after that, and also you know your body better than anyone else. So if you really struggle with it, no, don't put yourself at risk. Alhamdulillah, you can pay the fidya and you can, you know, um, make a lot of dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala heals you and bring a healing to you. 
I mean, um, the next question is how do we, this is actually on the, on the topic of advice Sheikh, that you did yesterday, just to break things up a little bit. Um, just uh, hold on uh, yes. for the diabetic. Yes. Sometimes people can control their diabetes and when they control their diabetes, they can fast. So if you think you are just in a time where your diabetes is not under control, there's no fear. You have to make it up when you get your diabetes under control. Okay. But if no, it's not about controlling it. It's just always like that. It's just something like, even though it's control, I'm still struggling. In this case, you do fit here. Yes. Uh, the next question is, um, how do we advise people who see advice as disrespectful and always refuse and fight? Do we continue to advise or stop? You, you try a different approach, okay? And sometimes, you know, in an indirect way, in um, hints, you know. Um, and if you find your advice only cause more harm and more, and the thing is not really worth it, don't pick your fight properly. You know, and Allah SWT, you know, and he guide everybody to best of manners. I mean, the next question is, um, I only fasted the first three days. It's not easy for me and I cannot hack without food and drink. Is there any way I can win in Ramadan and attain Allah's pleasure? Have I lost? I am not a fully practicing Muslim. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by his name and attributes to give you strength and to um, guide you and to make you among the good practicing Muslim. Allah Um Fasting is one of the pillars of Islam, and uh, we must fast. And the best thing in Ramadan to do is to fast. And I know it's not easy. I know it's hard. But make sure that you wake up for suhoor. Make sure that you sleep early. Fasting more important than praying than than I'm praying tarawih. I mean, praying the obligatory prayer is more important. But praying tarawih, pray at night. The staying night to pray is going to make you you know, uh, unable to wake up to do suhoor, don't sleep early, wake up before Fajr. Alhamdulillah, these days Ramadan comes in a warmer, I mean, in a, in a, if you are in North America or most of the north side of the world, uh, Ramadan comes in a very good day, it's not very hot, and even some sh shorter than before. Um, so make sure that you fast, start now. You know, make this today Tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I said, Ya Rabbi, help me. Ask Allah to help you. And drink water. Um, if you get um, hydrated, uh, one thing I can give you as a tip is to, you know, the chia seeds. You know, talk about Hafsa. Yes, yes. I have chia seeds with yogurt in the mornings. Yeah. Chia seed, if you put it overnight, okay, not in yogurt, in water. Okay. Overnight, over, overnight. Okay, and you consume it at Sahur. The Shia seed, when it goes to your stomach, it releases water all day long. So it keeps you hydrated. Okay, and that's the people who do cycling and like, you know, marathon, they do that. And it is something very, uh, very good for your body to keep hydrated. So if you if you suffer from dehydration, you know, have a good, healthy food at Tar, at Suhoor. And um, you know what? Just make sure that you understand that struggle, that, that uh, hardship. It is something to remind you of bigger goal, of bigger commitment. And that struggle for Allah SWT's wa sake. And as I said, it's not easy. But uh, it is possible. Yani, even children, kids, they, they in young age able to fast, alhamdulillah. So it is possible for the human being to uh, to do that. And um, nobody die from fasting. It's a good reminder for us to control our desires, reminder of us, of those who don't have food, like our brothers and sisters in Gaza today. It's a reminder for us of so many things, you know, uh, of the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala over us, that when he said, don't eat, we don't eat. Even it's halal, 100%. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, just ask Allah SWT to help you and, and make sure that you uh, do that. Um, Ramadan is nothing without fasting. Uh, the whole point, Shahr Ramadan, 
أنزل فيه القرآن يعني الله سبحانه وتعالى قال فمن شهد منكم الشهر فليصم This is the month of fasting This is the month where the Quran was revealed to us and uh, uh, the most recognized ibadah connecting to Ramadan is the fasting, the month of Ramadan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for you, my sister, and hopefully, inshallah, you will be able to do the rest of Ramadan and uh, help you to be strong in your iman. And I love that people are chiming in here in the chat with their own kind of advices and their experiences and suggestions. Nice. Um, I will even my own nutritionist, actually, Sheikh, I was talking about Ramadan and whatnot, and they're not Muslim and they got really excited. They're like, oh, you know, fasting is great for your health. Like it will reset your body. It'll do all these things. I'm like, you don't need to sell me on it. But mashallah, even non-Muslims will recognize that it's, it's become more of a trend nowadays as well, that it's good for you. It's just it, it is not. It's not easy, but it's not meant to be easy. But may Allah make it easy for all of us. I mean, um, the next question. By the way, I I, yes. I I didn't mean to dismiss uh, Shia with yogurt, but <laughs> I just was trying to say what my 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 way of doing it. That's okay, Sheikh. I'll try your way as well. Inshallah, for yeah. some variety. Um, the next question is. Um, how can we phrase and strategize our du'as in a most effective manner to ensure that their acceptance that they are accepted during the last ten nights? See, Ibn Al Qayyim said, "Rahimahullah, a du'a is like a weapon, and the weapon, the way the weapon became effective is based on the hand that handling the weapon. You give a weapon to shaky hands, it will not do anything." You give to a steady hand, firm, know how to aim, strong to carry, to carry it. It will be effective. That's right. It's the same weapon, but it depends on the hand that carry. It. A dua, the same thing. It depends on the heart that is handling the dua. If there is anything I want to tell you, that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will look at your heart when you make the dua. Make sure that this dua comes from your heart. It doesn't matter what language, what wording. As much as it matter that what is in your heart, how sincere you are, how really in Allah, Allah do not accept the dua from qalbin lahin ghafil, from a, a heart which is lahi distracted, ghafil, heedless, just words, ameen, and you don't even know what you say. Make sure that you basically have that, you're so certain, you have that yaqeen in your heart when you make the dua. And you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with full conviction. Inni la ahmiru hamma al-ijabah, walaik inni ahmiru hamma al-du'a. Umar said, I do not worry about Allah will answer or not. What I'm really worried about is, I will be able to make the du'a correct. My heart will be there. I'm sincere in it. I'm really begging Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for it. And try to do the du'a that came in the sunnah from Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. There are so many apps today, you know, that uh, show you the, the du'a of the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You know, like there's a du'a app by Ihsan Fusion. There's one of my students who did that after a class about the dhikr du'a. They created an app for people. The Muslim uh, fortress um, also, it's an app today. Uh, there is many apps that has the Quran and has dua in it from the Sunnah of the Prophet And you can read from some of Ajayat and Nabi Sassam. And read it in English, that's okay. Or do French, uh, Sawahili, whatever language you talk, you speak. Okay? Um, and uh, it is very powerful. And in these days, one of the most effective ones, Allahumma inna ka'afu in tuhibbu al-afu fa'afu anni. Oh Allah, you love afu. Al-afu, forgiveness. Al-afu, it means protections. Al-afu, it means uh, purifications. Ya Rab, you love, you love to forgive. You love to, you know, to purify. You love, you love to, uh, yani, uh, protect us from our, from us, from our sins. So do. Ya Rab, Protect me from anything that is harmful in my deen or my dunya. That's what al-afu is. Ya Rab, protect me from anything that can harm me. 
you are a particular thing that can harm you from the things that I have done in the past or I might do in the future. That's the best way to be. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us his best way. Allahumma amin. I mean, I do want to be mindful of the clock, so we'll take a handful of questions, inshallah, before we start our uh, regular Ramadan 360 program. But I do want to shout out on the topic of du'a. We just had a full webinar for four hours yesterday uh, speaking about accepted du'a. So if you're trying to look for some inspiration, you want to, to, to get yourself in the mood before the night, definitely highly recommend that as well. Sheikh Walid teaches fiqh of du'a and dhikr on Faith Essentials and as a seminar as well. So look out for that. If you're already a Faith Essentials student, I would brush up on that. Even before I did my Umrah, I went and brushed up on, on, on fiqh of du'a and dhikr and the names of Allah before I went. So highly recommend those to revisit time and time again. Again. Um, the next question is um, I'm confused about when the angels descend during Laylatul Qadr, especially since it's nighttime in some places and daytime in others. Also, different regions have different odd nights. How can I be sure I found Laylatul Qadr? That's Allah's problem, not your problem. He deals with it. What you need to worry about is your own night. Just focus on your own night. No, no, I'll guarantee you, in your night, there is angel descending and coming. How, when, what, how they manage that, that's the, that's the malaika uh, deal with that. And, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala deal with that. Don't worry. Allah capable of that. He knows how to do that. Focus on what you're concerned with, which is taking advantage of the night uh, of your own man. Because when we go into this kind of how, and we don't know how, because we don't know how they function. You know, these are part of the world of the unseen. How is something beyond our ability, beyond our imagine, our ability to imagine? We understand what it means, but it's hard to imagine. It's like the angel of death collect the soul of people in the same time, you know, from different places in the world, hundreds of thousands of them. That's we understand that. How? That's a different thing. That's why when Imam Malik Rahimala was asked about Allah, Allah above his throne. How? He said, How is is not. It's not up to you. It's not possible for you to understand how. But he is above his throne. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So uh, my advice to you to, to don't worry and don't distract yourself with these kind of questions. Focus. You, could, you just need to know that in the night of your own night, wherever you are, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala send these angels for you down on earth to make dua. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make dua for you and to pray for you and to intercede for you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he bless us of these nights of Laylatul Qadr. Allahumma amin. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. There you go. Don't worry about the logistics. Allah's got the logistics handled, inshallah, in ways that we can't imagine. Uh, the next couple questions before we close, the next question is, can women on their period go to the masjid in the last 10 nights to hear the Quran be recited and read the Quran on an iPad or other forms of worship? Uh, women are allowed during the period according to the strongest opinion, I and mean, that's not the majority opinion, enter the masjid. Uh, but it will not be something highly, uh, not something recommended because she does not going to be able to pray to rakat a heated masjid. <laughs> but if she needs to go there for a reason to attend classes, to attend, to be in the back listening to the dua, say, I mean, you know, listening to the Quran, because she, it's hard for her to recite at home, to focus at home. And that's where she gets really uh, the ability to um, to be more engaged in ibadah. It is allowed. And that opinion is an opinion of some of Ahlul Hadith and uh, some narration from some of the Bukhari, rahimahullah ta'ala. And Bukhari, rahimahullah, kinda, it looks like he leans toward that opinion as well. And one of the strongest arguments for that, there is no any authentic hadith clearly stating that women are not allowed to be in the masjid during their period. Nothing. And, and if this is this is the rule, the sharia would have been very clear and explicit about it. What came in Nabi Sallallahu in Eid, he said for the woman or their period, they don't be with the woman who don't have period. Because if there is a woman standing here, has a for salah, two, three for salah, then two, three have the period, they're not going to pray, then two, three, the, the line will be broken. But then Nabi Sallallahu told them to, gather in a, in, a, in, a, in a corner by themselves or on a spot by themselves and leave the, the woman who prayed by themselves just for organizing the crowd. 
And that's in the musalla outside the masjid. And in Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in his time, there is a woman who used to clean the masjid. And she stayed in the masjid. The one who she passed away in Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, why didn't you let me know about her death? And he went and he prayed on her after she was buried. This woman used to be in the masjid, to live in the masjid and to clean the masjid all the time. And Nabi Sallallahu never told her, by the way, when you have your period, don't come to the masjid. And that rule, if it is the rule, it needs to be explained. She's not going to figure that on her own. Okay? So we said this is not recommended because you're not going to be prayed to hit your masjid. But to enter the masjid, if there is a need for it, yes. If there is no need, no, better not to go to the masjid. Uh, or to be in the, maybe, um, in the, if there is like a, a center where there is an area, uh, a common uh, area for people to gather, you can be there. But if you're going to go on the end of the masjid, sit in the back, making dua with the imam, you know, reading Quran, that's fine, inshallah, even if you have your period. But it's not something I recommend. Beautiful. Jazakumullah khair, Sheikh. I know that there's so many questions still pending, but I want to be mindful of the time because our program is starting for Ramadan 360 soon. It was, of course, as always, very beneficial to have your insight on such a variety of topics. Bam, 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 back to back to back. May Allah reward you and accept from you the time that you give to us and the energy that you give to us on a regular basis. Uh, and inshallah, we have one more fatwa night, right, Sheikh? We have one next week, I believe, before we close off. Uh, I know there's inshallah. a lot of Eid questions that I skipped and and things that are maybe more pertinent to the, towards the end of Ramadan. So inshallah, we'll come back and we'll be answering some more of those and your final questions about any of your ibadah remaining in Ramadan. Sheikh, any final words before we close off? Uh, and we begin Yes, again? my final word is please uh, join Al-Maghrib um, family by um, this Ramadan by supporting your family, supporting your organization. Uh, Al-Maghrib needs support and need help. Um, go ahead and register for the uh, donation every night that you give at Ramadan. You know, whatever you can, $1,000 a day, $500 a day, $100 a day, $10,000 a day, whatever you can. There is, in Sadaqah, there is no too much and there is no too little. Everybody according to their ability. But I will promise you something. This is one of the best Sadaqah Jariya that you can invest in. That's my request. That my, if you give, give again. If you have not given, please give. Jazakumullah khair. And Hafsa, she will put the link for you guys. Yes. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Make dua for us to give success for all of us. That Allah subhanahu wa grant us success. Make Allah dua that Allah grant us Laylatul Qadr. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to whoever witness Laylatul Qadr and pray Laylatul Qadr, pray. Allah forgive his sins. And that's the whole point, that we come to Allah SWT cleansed and purified from our sins. Sallallahu alayhi wa Muhammad. Amin ya Rabbil Alameen. Jazakum Allah khair. That was Sheikh Walid Basyuni for Ramadan 360's third fatwa night. Alhamdulillah. I hope that you guys enjoyed and benefited from that session immensely. And yes, as he mentioned, the link is in the chat as always, almagrib.org forward slash donate. This time we have the automated donations for the last 10 nights that I've mentioned before, you guys have heard many times now that Alhamdulillah, we've had them set so that they are automated for your evening time, inshallah. So if you sign up in the, you know, during the day or whenever you get the, the donation comes out, inshallah, in the evening time after your iftar, dependent on whatever location that you're in. And there's geo pricing and whatnot available like there is for our courses, alhamdulillah. So you can donate in familiar currencies as well. Jazakum khair to everyone, mashallah, who's been very thoroughly supporting us and consistently supporting us. Uh, may Allah make it very heavy in your skills and may, may you see the results of your efforts. SubhanAllah, there's a, a little, I don't know if you guys have seen this before, but uh, I know it was shared briefly yesterday in, in the in the presentation that we made, and this is completely unplanned. But one thing that blows my mind, honestly, is that since this last year, just in the year 2023, um, so many people have benefited from the work that was done previously. And a majority of that comes from the donations that were received last Ramadan. So literally, 28 cities worldwide had multiple events. We had 55,000 students that were taught online and in person. We had 1,575 scholarships that were given. And we had 2 million views that were going on YouTube and then other social medias as well, subhanAllah. 
that's such a tangible result for the efforts and for the for the the generosity that folks had in the last year. And I pray that inshallah this number multiplies and that that stands heavily in your scale of deeds. That is just incredible to see how many Muslims that you guys have facilitated access to the deen and answers to their questions. And mashallah, year after year, we have folks that are coming in who are brand new to Islamic knowledge, to, to practicing consistently, to, to having the access to resources like we have, alhamdulillah, been blessed with and spoiled with here. I see so many of the questions that were submitted, which I'm so sorry, I, 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 I there's, it's so hard for me not to ask every single question, but I know many of them, we won't be able to stay on topic for the themes that we have for the Q&As, which is focus on Ramadan, focus on Ramadan 360. Um, but I know I saw questions about people struggling in their marriages and in, in their family situations and family members who've left Islam or so many like complex personal issues. And subhanAllah, one of the things that makes me so happy and so like confident in, in, in what Amagrib offers is that we have classes that thoroughly tackle and do justice and ihsan to the answers to all of these questions on all of these issues. Sheikh Walid himself, I don't get, I didn't get to plug him properly, but he's taught like dozens on dozens, actually hundreds of classes now, mashallah. He's got classes that he teaches on site. He's got classes that he teaches through this Zoom virtual experience live, through Al Maghrib online, through Faith Essentials. He's, he's taken Blessed Voyage Umrah. So he, mashallah, has been such a huge resource for us as a senior scholar, mashallah. But there's 20 plus uh, shiuk that we have with Al Maghrib who are educators with us, alhamdulillah. And I'm super, we're super blessed to be part of this community but if there's some questions or there's a heavy heavy topics that you're struggling with do keep up with the mugger family we do classes throughout the entire year in the formats in the the methods that are accessible for you and that are easy for you as well so jazakallah khair to those who are here early who stuck around with us and who are you know mashallah actively participating in the fatwa night q a that we just had i know fatwa night fatwa day whatever but it's night for some people it's day for some people we can never get this right we just keep doing that year after year and of course re reminder to the brits who are confused uh we are starting our ramadan 360 program after right now alhamdulillah there is that one hour time change so just keep that in mind for the remainder um of your uh, Ramadan, inshallah, that Ramadan 360 will be starting an hour later, inshallah. And we will have one more opportunity to ask questions to Sheikh Walid uh, for the final fatwa night next Sunday, same time, same place, 4 p.m. EST, inshallah, uh, 9 p.m. BST. And that is one, that's one more opportunity for you guys to submit questions. We actually got through quite a few of them. It was just a few that we had to, to pass over because of the topic. We got close to the end of the form. So inshallah, we will be able to catch up and get your questions answered. Uh, With that said, alhamdulillah, we have an instructor that if you've been here in previous Ramadan 360s, you have benefited from him, alhamdulillah, thoroughly as well. He's actually, he highlighted quite a bit in our Quran Reflect session. So we've missed him since he's been, he's been here since that time, alhamdulillah. Um, you've really enjoyed his sense of humor, his interaction, his style with connecting with the audience. Mashallah, tabarakallah. Um, I hope that you guys know who I'm talking about, about by this point, or at least you received your email so you have some insight, inshallah. Yes, it's Sheikh Ahmed Salim who is back with us Quran Reflect last year was lit I hope that you feel that uh, I'm glad that you feel that way in uh, Nemo and that inshallah you'll enjoy today's session we haven't been as blessed this year we've only got him for this one session so we've got to savor it inshallah this time um, but with that said I do want to given a couple plugs, a couple reminders before we begin our session with Sheikh Ahmed, then you guys get a chance to benefit from him and ask him questions as well for Ramadan 360, day number 21. SubhanAllah, less than 10 days now. It's, it's getting a little scarier with this countdown, SubhanAllah. Of course, I want to thank the amazing folks that make Ramadan 360 possible year after year. This year, we partnered with Islamic Relief in Canada, HHRD in the US, and Forgotten Woman in the UK. Um, I know you guys had a lot of questions during Islamic Relief Day here uh, in Ramadan 360 this past week. Inshallah, we'll have HHRD Day. We will have Forgotten Woman Day so you guys can hear about their efforts and their campaigns as well. But I do want you guys to make sure you check out those links that we share in the chat uh, and make sure that you visit their, 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 their websites and their pages because they have a lot of details about how they're getting their support into Gaza, into other areas of need. And I know a lot of the questions that I saw getting requested or, or confusion that we had were answered thoroughly, alhamdulillah, and I was very satisfied myself supporting the organizations. And Al-Maghrib is very careful how we vet the organizations that we partner with. Um, with that said, day number 21, I'm very excited to jump in. One last reminder, we also have a Kahoot coming at the end of this session. So if you guys have been attending regularly and paying attention and being focused, being zoned in, zoomed in, zoom, zoomed in I guess, uh, inshallah, you guys will have a good chance of winning in this Kahoot. The prize is going to be a little extra special, and I'll tell you guys more about it afterwards, inshallah, during the break. But with that said, I want to bring on Sheikh Ahmed Salim um, and invite him back to the Al-Maghrib 
community and see the Maghrib crowd. Welcome back. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, Sheikh Ahmed. It has been far too long. How are you doing today? Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you? Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. I'm well. Alhamdulillah. How is Atlanta well. weather right now? Uh, it's 24 or 23 degrees Celsius. That's so pretty oh, good. Oh, must be nice. I was gonna, it I was gonna is, rub uh, in. Yes, are you? It's going? nice. It, it's it's very nice. It's very different than uh, uh, Canada. I'm in Canada right now, so. Oh no. <laughs> I'm. <laughs> Never mind. Yeah, I'm, in, I'm in cold, but it's 26 degrees in in Atlanta right now. So, alhamdulillah, it's pretty warm. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. How are you been? How you been? I've been great. It's great sure. to have you back in town. I didn't even know you were back in town, Sheikh. Mashallah, that's I a am. blessing. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Uh, I'll be there at Isna tomorrow. So inshallah. Inshallah, inshallah. inshallah. Incredible. Great to hear, Sheikh. We're excited to benefit lovely. from you. I'm sorry. I think there's a bit of a lag, so I'm talking over you. So I'm going to pass it off to you, inshallah, so that you can start us off for the uh, topic. So just, I just want to say something. So the place where I'm doing the the, the live from, Mm -hmm. They have uh, their jama is going to happen at five thirty. Okay. Um. So there might be an interruption. They know that they're going to delay a little bit. So I, I might, uh, you know, I might have to leave. Not if 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 we don't. I don't know if there are speakers in this room or not. We'll figure <laughs> this okay. out. We'll find uh, out. Just give me, We'll find out. Inshallah. All inshallah. right. Inshallah. All right. Bismillah. All right. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Bismillah alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulillahi wa baad Rabbi shurah fi sadri wa yasirri amin wa hlu lukta tam milisani yafqahu qawli rabbana zidna ilman ya kareem Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh everyone I hope you guys are doing well inshallah The topic for today is tawadu' submissive humility and this topic cannot be covered you know in 20 minutes at all or 25 minutes um so all i would be trying to do is allude to some of that which has been said by some of our scholars um, because for us to be able to understand any concept in life we must understand the definitions that were set by our pious predecessors about it because sometimes we may think oh this person looks very religious and those definitions of religiosity are very contemporary to us and then Maybe if some other people from the past, they would come, they would look at that person, they would be like, oh, you're not religious at all, because the definitions have changed. So our definitions, and you know, that has been the Al-Maghrib's motto from the beginning, is that we go back to our pious predecessors. We, we connect with, with our setup. And what they said is the standard for us. What TikTok says is not the standard for us, right? Uh, it, what Instagram tells us to be like, what's a a practicing brother or a practicing sister or a practicing couple, what they look like is not what the standard is for us. So looking back, we have to first look at any concept, Tawado, we have to look at it from just a pure perspective of definition. So what is the definition that the ulama have said linguistically about Tawado? Tawado itself in general, it basically means to lower something, um, to, to put yourself down uh, literally. Uh, and it's also to leave any form of uh, ascension. So you wanna, you want to have a higher status. You want to have higher position. The desire to leave, the desire of seeking that, is something which is called tawado in the language. Now uh, there are words. Again, this is this is my area, so I really love this. But you know, just quickly, I'll, I'll allude to certain things. There are a lot of words that people may confuse. So, for example, they may there's there's word tawado, which is submissive humility. Tadallul, uh, you know, uh, tadallul is to be able to uh, humble yourself, but in, in in a disgraceful manner. So there's an element of humility with disrespect attached to it. Then there's khushur. These are all words that play with one another. Khushur is to to feel the veneration and awe, to understand the awe of someone and then get affected with it. So there are differences in all of this, and I'm going to quickly allude to that. So first, the difference between tawado, submissive humility, which and the difference between tadallul, hum, uh, which is disgraceful humility, is tawado, you have the ability, you have the power, so sometimes we'll say this is a very obedient servant, right? Like, you know, if somebody had a servant at home or somebody, you'll be like, you know, this is a really obedient employee or, this, you know, he, he really follows. That doesn't mean that the employee does not have the ability to be arrogant towards his boss or towards his workplace. It just means that he has allowed and understood his spot and position. And he said, I will act according to the position I've been given. Whereas tadallul, 
is where you know what, what this you know su- submission with disgrace is you don't have the ability and you 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 are incapable you have no other choice but to submit you don't have the choice of power you don't have the sho- choice to show aggression that doesn't exist so that's tadallul then khushu' is something really interesting so tawadu is in caps it, it it affects humbleness this our humbleness you know you know submissive humbleness it affects our akhlaq our character and it uh, affects our afal our actions so it's our akhlaq the character the demeanor and you know how i carry my akhlaq and afal and specifically actions that are azahira actions that are obvious and public to people and also batina some internal some say it's all the internal Khushur is the effect of tawadur on my face, on my hands, on my limbs. It's the effect of my heart's submissive humbleness in my character, in my actions, internally and externally. And because of that, there, the result of that feeling, that spiritual feeling, there is an effect of khushur i.e. my jawarih, my limbs, my hands, my body, my eyesight, the way I look, they represent that. So the, the best example of this is when Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went on Isra' wal Mi'raj. And he was there. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, ma about him? He says, ma zaga al-basaru wa ma taha. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he was in the presence over there in, 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 you know, in the divine realm, he was told to look at a certain direction. Imagine if you ever entered and I, if we ever entered a palace of some king or, you know, in the Middle East, one of these kings, they invite us and you enter the palace. And now you are, what, what happens to us? We don't, we're not, hum, we're like, look at that ceiling. Wow. That chandelier. Oh my God. They've got the smart home systems. It's like all embedded. Look at that express. If I, it was me, I'd be checking for the coffee machine, right? We're, look at that espresso machine. That's all oh, it's embedded in his house. All of these things. Rasulullah was in the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's divine realm. And Allah says, ما زاغ البصر وما طغى. Rasulullah showed that that, that khushu' of Prophet sallam. His heart was filled with submissiveness to Allah. He was humble in front of Allah. And that khushu' showed that his eyesight did not deviate. And he did not, out of respect, did not look left and right and start looking at, and, oh my God, look at this divine realm, it's so cool. He didn't do any of that. He just stayed humble and his eyesight showed khushur. Okay? So these are different meanings and sadly, all of these words are translated as humbleness. Right? So we don't have time to go into all of these, but anyhow. <coughs> so the question may happen that do we have any ayat or verses from the Quran? Because we're in Ramadan 360 and this is the month of Quran. Yes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says the primary ayah that is, is given as tawadur is وَعِبَادُ الرَّحْمَنِ الَّذِينَ يَمْشُونَ عَلَى الْأَرْضِ هَوْنَا That the ibad of Rahman, the, 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 the servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the servants of the most merciful, are those alladina yamshuna? They are the ones that walk. The word yamshuna over here is walk, but the, the the tense that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala used is yamshun, which means it's a present continuous tense. It's a it's a, a perpetual habit of theirs. It's not a one off thing. It's not a Ramadan thing. They live this yamshuna. They walk in every aspect of their life. Alal ardi on this earth, haunan with waqar, with with sukun. Without and the definition of waqar is 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 again they say waqar is that you are humbled and you have this 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 ability. Um, uh, sorry, the definition not waqar. I ch- uh, changed my word. That uh, the definition of hawlan is is ease, but in specific or 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 uh, uh, you know having uh, ease and to be able to facilitate it for other people. But the actual definition is it has these all elements combined in it. Number one, the person who walks on this earth with this ease has sakina he has tranquility then the person who walks with haun he has waqar poise and dignity and veneration of self and veneration of allah mutawadi'in he has an element of tawadu submissive uh, 
humbleness. غير الأشيرين. He doesn't point to people like, look at that, look at that, look. He's he's not going around. He's not concerned with that which is around. ولا متكبرين. And he doesn't have arrogance. Hassan al-Basri, he used to say, ulama'u hulama. Who are these people who walk with submissive humility and tawadu? They are scholars. Number one, I, they have knowledge. Hulama, they have hilm, forbearance. Now, hilm is a state. Um, when a baby is suckling the breast of the mother, and if you've ever seen that child, he has no concern. He's just lost in that state. He, No matter what happens around that baby, when they're latched on, they're not concerned. They're not. They're least concerned about their surroundings. There could be a fire. There could be anything. But they're like, no. That state is the state of hilm, where you have so much calm and control in your life because of knowledge, because of tawadu, that your external surroundings do not impact you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us that. So another ayah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about, Allah tells to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, وَاخْفِضْ جَنَاحَكَ لِمَنِ اتَّبَعَكَ مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ O Prophet of Allah, O Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, O Prophet, اخْفِضْ lower جَنَاحَكَ your wings لِمَنِ اتَّبَعَكَ for the ones who follow you من المؤمنين, from the believers. And that is why I find it very odd that if Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is being commanded to be humble, then all these YouTube shiukhs, I call them, they, they haven't really studied much. And, and, and then they go out and their only business is to show a lack of humility to every single scholar they can name and go after. That is, and you right away, you know, like there is no humbleness there. Because when we get to some of the other words, some of, some of what ulama have said and some of the ahadith, we're going to see that. Now, some of the ahadith, because we are short on time, I have to keep jumping on topics. Uh, you know, I have like 17 ayat. I just got to one or two. But anyhow, we'll, we'll go, get into that. Uh, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, مَا تَوَاضَعَ أَحَدٌ لِلَّهِ إِلَّا رَفَعَهُ الله. That if, a, you know, whenever a person humbles himself for the sake of Allah, there's a huge difference in Arabic language between تَوَاضَعَ لِلَّهِ وَتَوَاضَعَ عَلَى the, the difference. We're talking about lilla, which is submissive humbleness. The result is every single time a person is going to do that, illa, except the rafa'ahullah, Allah is going to raise our ranks. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us that ability. Uh, Qadi Iyad, you know, the famous book he has written, um, Shifa uh, Li Ta'arif uh, Ma'arifati Mustafa. Uh, the one of the best, one of one of the very prominent Sira books. He mentions in that he says that this is going to be this this exaltion, this this rising in ranks is going to be in two two ways that Allah is going to provide that. Number one is that Allah will raise your ranks in this dunya. How he says by placing your love in the hearts of others, so others find you. And your your status exalted, and they start venerating. So they they look at you, and they're like, "Man, this is the, this is somebody who is connected to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. This is someone." And now you, you find this strange things. Like I've seen this. There was a scholar in 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 Hassa where I studied, and Allah had given him da'wat al mustajaba. He had he had given he was given an honor like every du'a he would make. They would come true. And wallahi, when I went to visit his the Sheikh's house and asked him to make dua for me and my family, he, he honored me, he took me and my brother inside, and he fed us food with his hand. He said, You are in my house and you're my guest. I was at that time 27, 28. He said, You will eat food from my hand. I will serve you food. And I was just like, I was like, man, this is I I felt awkward. As a Canadian, but like I was like, man, that is like this sheikh doesn't have to. But then when I go outside, I see lines of most expensive cars you can think of, like from Lambos to Rolls Royces, they're all parked outside. 
And I'm like, why are these people here? I asked the guy who was serving the sheikh. And he's like, they're all here because they have some issue in their life. And they know that the dua of the sheikh is accepted. And he lives in this, this small house in a place where the street is not even asphalted. And he's there. And all these rich people with millions of dollars of money to be able to afford these cars are lining up and bringing either their kids or their parents to make dua. This is the, the actual meaning of this, that Allah will raise your ranks in ways you cannot imagine. You don't have any following. Recently, you know, Maulana Adam, he passed away in UK. You know, I posted it on my Instagram. I don't know if anybody can look it up. There's a video of the Janaza that one you know, of the brothers he shared with me. And I posted that on my Instagram. I think it should be the last reel or two, last two or three reels that I posted. And you see blocks on blocks, like, you know, this person walks and walks and a walk and like one block, two blocks, three blocks, line up of people that just lined up to just see the blessed face of the Sheikh. Nobody has any idea. What's his Instagram account? What's his TikTok account? Nothing. We don't know anything about that. Despite all of that, subhanAllah, Allah placed because he humbled himself for the sake of Allah. When his body left, they were forced, the, the city said for the janazah that the people expected are going to be so much that in the Leicester Masjid, we're not going to be able to fill him. The Masjid can accommodate 4,000 people. They're like, we're not going to be able to accommodate his, 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 his janazah. And they ended up doing it in a big ground where 20, 30,000 people showed for his janazah. No conference in North America attracts that many people. His janazah attracted that. وَمَا تَوَاضَعَ أَحَدٌ لِلَّهِ if a, It doesn't happen except if everyone humbles themselves for Allah except إِلَّا رَفَعَهُ اللَّهِ The consequence is Allah is going to raise you and your ranks in this dunya. So Qadi Riyad said your first re re ascension is in this dunya. And the second ascension is on the day of judgment. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us that. <clears throat> then another hadith, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Inna Allah awha ilayya an tawadau. Allah says, Allah has instructed me through wahi. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Allah has instructed me through wahi to be humble to one another. Hatta la yafkhar ahadun ala ahad. So there's no one left that is boasting and arrogant upon one another. Wa la yabghi ahadun ala ahad. And nobody should seek to elevate themselves forcefully upon your other brother or sister. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us this tawadu, ya Rabb. Then, in another hadith, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, Ala ukhbirukum bi ahli al-jannah. May Allah make us from the people of Jannah, ya Rabb. O oh Allah, ala ukhbirukum, shall I not, uh, sorry, Prophet ﷺ says, O oh people, shall I not tell you of the people of Jannah, the Sahaba, they said, qalu bala ya Rasulullah, tell us, qala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, all of you should say sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, every time I repeat this, kullu da'ifin mutada'afin, every weak person, and every person who has the power to become strong, who has the power to show arrogance, Mutadafin, but he chooses to stay humble. Walaw aqsama ala Allahi. And if he says by Allah, if he takes an oath and takes a qasam by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, la abarrahu. Allah will fulfill that qasam. Allah will honor that qasam. I'll tell you a story that was told to me about Tawadu. There was the Sheikh in a remote town. I don't want to say which city. But, you know, and this, the masjid was struggling. And the sheikh did not want to put himself on Instagram. He did not want to put himself on social media. He said, I am going to do da'wah of the old ways. So he kept struggling and struggling. And one day, there was a, he said, I'm going to do a fundraiser. And this was last Ramadan, uh, or I think the Ramadan before that. So he did a fundraiser. And in that fundraiser, you know, he called the community people and word of mouth and everybody came for the fundraiser. And he said, there was a person over there and a rich person in the gathering. Now he's asking for money and asking for money, but nobody is giving money. So he says, whosoever builds the masjid, 
I mean, if you accept and you're going to build the masjid, I will give you a contract. Like I'll write a contract for you. I'll give you a contract guaranteeing you Jannah. The Sheikh said that. Now, there was a rich person in there. He says, I will fulfill, I, I will make the job. Uh, sorry, I will make the message for you. Halas. But you guarantee that you're going to give me this contract. He said, I guarantee you that I'm going to give you this contract. You can take this to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment, and I will give that. The people came up to him and said, you can't do that. And I said, yeah, because Prophet sallallahu promised he said, whoever, you know, if you build a masjid for Allah, for, for, for the house of Allah, Allah is going to build a house for you. So I'm not doing anything wrong. I just, you know, could, uh, it made it more tangible to people. Now, the sheikh goes to sleep. Here's where all of you are going to have goosebumps. Sheikh goes to sleep and an angel comes, angel comes to him in his dream. In the sheikh. And, you know, the person who was telling me heard it directly from the sheikh. And the sheikh says that the, in the dream, the person says, the angel says, Ya Fulan, I'm just hiding his name. Ya Fulan, oh so and so. Ana malakun min rabi'. I'm the angel from the fourth sky. And Allah has sent me to communicate to you a message in the dream. He, and he says, Ammal aqdu. As for the contract that you give to that person, فَوَثَّقْنَا We have certified that contract. Allah has certified that contract for that person. أَمَّلْ صَدَقَةُ And as for the sadaqa, فَقَبِلْنَا That sadaqa we have accepted from you. وَأَمَّلْ abdu, And the person who gave that, that sadaqa, فَأَدْخَلْنَا We have entered him into Jannah. Subhanallah. This person, nobody knows about the Sheikh who is in North America. He's an unknown person. That is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, the Prophet says, لَوْ أَقْسَمَ عَلَى اللَّهِ If a person, he does qasam, by Allah you will get this, Allah will لَأَبَرَّهُ He will fulfill his qasam. Because of that humility. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you know he fills our hearts with this submissive humility. Now it was very hard for me to encapsulate all of this for you because this humility course that I, you know, like you know, we have you know a khlaq course with that humbleness thing is like a, a four hour lecture that I have. Like I have I have ten units in that lecture. I, we just touched on, you know, I think two units and a few things in there. But anyhow, may Allah give us tawfiq um to fulfill that. Um, now, um, I, uh, how am I doing with time? I don't have any recollection of time because I have all my screens open. You're ahead oh. of time, alhamdulillah. You still have about 10 minutes, Jay. Okay, I have 10 minutes. Do, can we do Q&A so then I don't want to miss my salah? Yes, inshallah, we can do that. If we have, so if, if salah is kicking in in four minutes, if you guys have questions on the topic of submissive <clears throat> humility, please feel free to drop them to me in the chat. I know a couple folks have sent them directly. Um, okay, and then you will read them? Yes, inshallah, just so that they don't get lost in the in the sauce of, of everybody commenting on us. <coughs> okay. um, while while the questions are coming to you, uh, you line up the questions. I'll I'll end and I'll, I'll wrap up. Inshallah. Sounds good, Bismillah. Okay, um, so here are some of the the statements uh, uh, of our salaf related to um, tawadu, and again for you guys, for all of us to be able to you know keep that in in mind for now. Right, Mu'adh ibn Jabal, he says, uh, sorry, uh, sorry, that's not where I was in, um, over here, Bismillah. Okay, so Urwa ibn uh, Zubair, he says, a tawadu, it is, it, it, what is tawadu? He says, it is one of the most nobler, noblest character for a person. And a person who has tawadu, he safeguards his honor. So he's very careful about, his, he's hum, he humbles himself. He has the ability to show arrogance. But he's also very concerned about, you know, uh, sharuf. Yani he's very care, careful about his honor. And he doesn't say, oh, humility, it's okay. It's for the sake of Allah. You can, you can run over me with the car. I don't care. I'm just, mashallah, very humble to you. Like, it doesn't work like that. So it's also that you, you're, you're careful about your honor. It's, it's, it's an element of dignity. You safeguard your honor. But it's not, you know, sometimes like 
you know, I don't want to allude to that, but when I was in the Middle East, for example, and we would meet any of these rich guys and stuff, I would meet some people from different ethnicities. And, you know, they would they would meet them with like, oh, salikom, and they would like humble, like it, that is not tawadu. That is tadallul. That is like, you are becoming ajiz, you are becoming incapacitated in front of this person because of his money, his status, whatever. The wadu is you keep your head up, you keep your arm, but you don't show arrogance. But deep down inside, you understand that whatever this person has, only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given. And if he has this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is capable of taking this from, from him or anybody else. So again, um, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you know uh, he allows us to show element of humility. Uh, you know, um, I was once... Um, I'm not going to mention someone, but like we were in a gathering and stuff like that. And uh, one of the persons that was sitting next to, he's, he's you know, he he's quite knowledgeable. And we were talking about some other person. We were saying, okay, you know what? Did you see that that article that was written? And we were discussing the article and stuff like that. And I, I made a comment. I said, you know, mashallah, this is quite an uh, in-depth article. And mashallah, so knowledgeable of this person that he was able to put this together. And the person next to me, he was there, and I was like, I was just so shocked. And he said, I'm no less knowledgeable than that person. This is not tawadur, right? The tawadur is when you don't seek al ulu, you don't seek ascension. And if Allah gives it to you, you're careful with that ascension. You're very careful that Allah has given you a makana and a maqam, He has given you a position and a status, and you don't want to spoil that, you don't want to abuse that. You don't want to gain unnecessary benefit from that, inshallah. Anyhow, if you have, uh, have said there are any questions, I'll oh, take good. those right now before I can get into the... All right, we're cutting it close to the wire, so I'll be as, as quick as I can, inshallah. Um, the one question, so there's a couple that are, that, are, that are on the same theme. The one, the latest one I have is, how can we remove showing off from the good actions that we do? Because in the stories that you shared, it's easy to fall into riya and into showing off. So we all are going to be susceptible to riya. Anybody believes that it's not going to happen. Um, so there are multiple things. Number one is initiation. The purer our intention is, the less susceptible our amal becomes of riyah. Number two is oftentimes within the amal, shaitan comes and plays with us too. So it may not be riyah, but shaitan wants to mess up your salah. And like, you know what? Yeah, man, you don't have true intentions here. Look, you may be praying for, you're coming to a jama'ah in the masjid. And now you're, you know, you're praying according to the, the imam and you're, you're slowing down your salah. But in private, you don't do that. Well, coming to the masjid and jama'ah is a recommendation by Prophet it's a, it's It's almost a wajib. So I'm coming to fulfill the wajib and shaitan wants to mess this up. One of the other things that really helps us in, in uh, Riyadh is privately uh, having self-consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, when we're in private, having you know uh, self-consciousness. How does that happen? Number one, the more we work on our taqwa. Number two is... Um, that we understand ourselves. You know, the more ma'rifah I have of myself and my the more awareness I have of myself, the the more conscious I am going to be about this these things that are triggers that may trigger a show-off feeling inside of me. I hope that helps. I mean, we have a small little time, but... Beautiful. So there's a few. Okay, okay. We won't be able to do through most of these questions, but it's okay a, until the Iqama happens. I, I can okay. join the last raka. It's fine. Okay, Jazakumullah khair. So uh, there actually were a few clarifications, Sheikh, that people were a little confused about. Sure. Um, in the story that you mentioned about the Sheikh, that people come to him, a lot of rich people come to him because his du'as get accepted. People are wondering, like, would that not cross the line in terms of people going th through one person as a conduit to get their du'as accepted instead of going and asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directly? Um, wouldn't it be better for that Sheikh not to let people come to him? Or is there a wisdom in that that, that we're not understanding? There is a massive tradition in the past where if uh, a person was mustajab with da'wah, uh, if a person was known for da'wah, people would bring their kids. Um, you know, it, it, there are stories of Umar ibn Abdul Aziz. There are stories of uh, many of the other scholars in the 4th century. Uh, they would bring their kids to the sheikh. And, and th that also happened at the time of Rasulullah. And then it keeps go on, going on. Where it becomes problematic is where we start attributing sanctity to the sheikh, right? Where we start saying that this person, the sheikh is sanctified somehow. And now we start venerating his existence, right? Like I was, I was invited to some, uh, you know, retreat 
and I was there, and then there was some, you know, some, somebody that was there, and this was this was in like North America, and this person he the, the sheikh walked away, and some of his followers. Like they were, they were taking the dust from the foot that he walked on, and they were rubbing it on their faces. And I was just like, I was like, what is going on, right? Like he was a speaker, and I was a speaker, and there was multiple speakers that are coming in, and it was just like ten speakers there. And I was just like, that is not what's allowed. Yeah. Like that, and then and I, I told the sheikh, I'm like, why don't you tell the people? They're like, well, they're not ready yet. I'm like, that doesn't matter if they're not ready. They're like, this is this is bottom line. You're getting into shirk now. Like they they think mm-hmm. your dust is somehow sacred. So that is definitely problematic, right? But if if you know that the person, like when we go to a pious person, when we go to a sheikh, if this is a common thing in India and Pakistan. It's like make dua for us. Mm. That's the same thing. But now that sheikh, his duas are known to be accepted. So you know, I hope that that answers the question. Exactly. For that clarification, that yes, that that does. Um, the final one we'll try to squeeze in is: Does having humility and being humble mean that we should not share our achievements? Not necessarily. Uh, sharing achievements, you should keep, if you're working on a great achievement, you should keep it under the hat until it is achieved, right? A lot of times we start off a project, we haven't even kicked off and we put put a story on Instagram and we'll do something about it and it, it will feel, you know, you'll get ayn on it. But now if you've achieved something, for as for the ni'mah that Allah has given you, you should let people know. So you achieve, you got an MBA, you can talk about that MBA. Uh, now, the difference is, Today we are an oversatch- we're we're oversaturated with this idea that I need to share every achievement with everyone, okay, uh, or every accomplishment with every person. It doesn't work like that. You share with your family, you share with your core people. Uh, you know, uh, people don't need to know. You know, occasional sharing is fine, but like th- this constant. Like, I went to a restaurant with my friends two days ago. You know, after taraweeh. And literally every time the food platter was coming on every table, rather than enjoying the food and being in that moment, everybody was taking out their phones and they were like, like, oh, I, like, no, don't touch it. I got to take these photos. And then you share that. That is, I think, too excessive because we have, we, we, we have like a level of OCD now about like sharing every single thing. And that is definitely not good. You shouldn't be sharing every single aspect of your life. But major accomplishments and achievements, there is nothing wrong in Islam. Uh, to share it as long as you know that you're you're doing it from the intention that you want to motivate others or you want to be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or that that accomplishment may provide some source of risk or benefit to you in this dunya which is fine too oh, don't we do that in our CVs like we write like I have a bachelor's degree I got this 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 I have worked over here and we uh, the list of achievements and then we send it to a person right a random person and you know we put it on LinkedIn that's all fine you know as long as the intention is in the right place I can take one more question. Okay, beautiful. Awesome sauce. So let me scroll up because I actually read the wrong question. That was not in order. The the question before that was, I'm curious in submissive humility, should we not desire ambition for higher roles with importance? Um, In dunya, you can achieve, you desire higher roles for sure. Uh, In reference to your deen, you should desire higher ranks in ilm, seeking knowledge. Uh, many of my teachers, uh, when I was studying with them, they wouldn't seek, um, I want to be a sheikh and I want to be on a pulpit. That is not something that was ever sought by the Salaf al-Salihin. It was that when you were ready, your teachers would say, you should go ahead and teach. Right? Um, one of the teachers, I remember, you know, Sheikh Mukhtar and Sheikh Qiti, very famous scholar of ours, you know, may Allah preserve him. And he says that uh, I have more than 800 teachers that I've studied with and I did not become public. I did not make myself public and, you know, and, and seek that position of, of Makana and position until more than hundred of my, exactly hundred number hundred. Like when my hundredth teacher told me you are ready to teach, that's when I went and I went ahead and, and teach. And today what we're seeing is a lot of people that, for the sake of da'wah, they come. They may be able to to mass a lot of uh, a bigger platform and stuff like that, but then they're completely empty. Uh, you may gain benefit. You may have 10, 12 years. But if you, I, I say, here's the barometer to check if you're beneficial to the community. Um, you look at the conference circuit from the time I was a teenager till now. There are certain names that are there and they have stuck around. But there were other names that came because they had a hype moment and then their hype moment died and then they dissipated. And another person came and hype moment came. So you may have some temporary benefit in this dunya, but it's not going to be everlasting. And at the end of it, it's like Imam Malik. He said, you know, 
uh, somebody's like, why are you writing Muwatta Imam Malik? And he said, tomorrow, i.e. in the future, you shall know whatever was written for the sake of Allah, it would sustain. Now, for the sake of Allah means you are worthy of also writing it. Not a jahil writing a hadith book. It doesn't work like that. Beautiful. Well said. Practical advice and practical terms. Jazakumullah khair. Uh, Sheikh Ahmed Salim for being back with us for Ramadan 360. We missed Barakallah. you this year. But Barakallah. alhamdulillah for the amazing uh, a chance to benefit from you, inshallah. We'll let you go. I know uh, you, you, yes, it's going to interrupt you any salah, second, inshallah. inshallah. No worries. Exactly. All right, we'll see you very soon. Assalamu alaikum, alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Um, that was Sheikh Ahmed Salim on the topic of submissive humility for Ramadan 360. Alhamdulillah, I was able to squeeze in a little bit extra time to answer some of your questions. Uh, and yes, the Zakwa here to those who contributed and who asked questions as well. Abdul H is, is saying, Miss QR with you, Sheikh. Yes, we do miss it. But Alhamdulillah, we do have the chance. And, and somebody was just asking me earlier in the session, can you please give us extra time with this Alatamiya? Because I have been shortchanging you guys without any ill intent uh, the last few days. So Alhamdulillah. We have Ustad Atemiya back with us for Quran Reflect for today, and you guys will get more time, inshallah, to reflect and to, for those who are raising their hands and who are ready, inshallah, to share, get ready for that. I'd love to hear some more, some new voices and some new names, inshallah, in the um, in the list, alhamdulillah. With that said, um, I do want to remind you guys, as we have been, that the last 10 nights are upon us. Alhamdulillah, we just had the 21th, 21st night, 21th night here in North America for most, for a lot of people. And I know in the Far East, it's coming up as well, subhanAllah, or you guys are just ending off with it, subhanAllah. Uh, and these days are going to wish by. I will honestly share my personal experience um, that I did not automate my donations, the biggest hypocrite that I am, may Allah forgive me, uh, last night. And I was... Literally every so every time I went down to donate, I was having some trouble with my card or the thing wasn't working or the website or my connection. And subhanAllah, I made my donation um, just at the nick of time, I thought. And then I found out a few hours later, my father's like, oh, no, the, the adhan or the adhan went off at this time. But the actual time of Fajr kicked in at this time. So you missed it. So do not be do not be Hafsa. Make sure that you do what what we've been saying to do is to make sure that you do automate for the last 10 nights. If you're having any issues with that, let me know in the chat and we can help. But I sure learned my lesson on the 21st night. Uh, to to put my money where my mouth is, subhanAllah. Although I did make my donations at random times or at different times during the day in Ramadan, I just, I should have done that. I should have automated. And here we are. Um, but inshallah, khair, you have the opportunity to not be in my shoes. Go to almaghrib.org forward slash donate. And for the last 10 nights, you have the ability to automate whatever little or as much as you can afford, inshallah, and to catch the blessed times in the, of, the, of the evening. And hopefully to catch Layutul Qadr, inshallah, may Allah accept from you all. Um, with that said, I do want to mention we have a Kahoot, inshallah, at the end of this session. And the Kahoot prize this time is going to be a little unique. Um, and I, some of you may know what this is. Some of you may not. If you're part of the community already, you've probably heard the term all access pass before. Um, and it's something that we haven't had a chance to launch this Ramadan. So a lot of people are asking me about it and we did not make this available to the public. All access pass is a pass that gives you access to everything that al Maghrib launches through our virtual classes, which is what we do here through Zoom and that we project to the audience and you, you guys are live with the instructor and engaging with him like you guys have been this Ramadan, except on a specific topic on multiple, uh, you know, you know, events and multiple dates coming back and forth, whether it's for a weekly class or whether it's for a weekend class. So it's a little bit more intensive. It's a lot more focused on a specific topic with a specific group of people. Um, or if it's a Al Maghrib online class that's been professionally filmed and edited and cut down to be very easy and, and, and smooth for you to access topic by topic, video by video had dozens of hours of content, or if it's an on-site class in person, or if it's Faith Essentials, which we've been discussing, which is our comprehensive, complete, uh, and concise platform for learning all the essentials of Islam in one place. You get access to all of that for the remainder of this one, for the remainder of 2024, inshallah. So if you've been wanting to binge on the Amagrib experience, but you're like overwhelmed about where to start, or you want to access everything, but you don't, uh, you couldn't have afforded all access passes is actually 595 US dollars full price. So it's the, it is the prize. Um, and I have not given customer service any warning. So they're just going to have to take it that this is going to be the prize inshallah, because usually they, they have a say in that part of it, but it's an amazing prize. If you do participate in our Kahoot today, inshallah, you will be eligible to potentially win an all access pass for the rest of 2024. So get your, your notes brushed up, inshallah. We have pretty easy questions. We got a mixture of them, a couple of slightly more specific ones for specific talks, but get excited. We can't wait, inshallah, to see who wins for this year's 
Kahoot for this week's Kahoot, inshallah. With that said, I know Ustada Taymiyyah has been with us patiently, and I promise that I would not shortchange you guys for your Quran reflect reflection time. So we have Alhamdulillah the full session for today. So we're looking forward to that. Ustada Taymiyyah Zubair, welcome back to Ramadan 360. How are you doing today? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Alhamdulillah, I'm well. Wa uh, alaikum Better rested today. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. I hope so. I hope so. Yeah, I know you threatened me to, to, to put me on the spot for, for yesterday's uh, session, but I already had a, you know the master plan of having Abdul Rahman host. So I wasn't I was able to sneak out. Alhamdulillah. Okay. But let's see today, inshallah. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see if I disappear mid-session. All right, bismillah. Let's jump right in on the topic. All right, let's begin. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh everyone. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillahi ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulihi al-kareem. I'm just trying to share the screen. Uh, are you able to see it? Yes, we can see okay, it. Okay, alhamdulillah. All right. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillahi ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Mu'minun, Qad aflah al-Mu'minun. Certainly will the believers have succeeded, they who are during their prayer humbly submissive. So I want to talk about Al-Khushur, because Alhamdulillah we did have a Quran Reflect session already on the Wadur, when Shaykh Nawid uh, did, the, did, the, did the first session, so inshallah today we'll do Khushur. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran that the believers will be successful. But who are these believers? The first quality that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions is the fact that they have khushur. خاشعون, they have khushur in their salah. And Ibn al-Qayyim says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has set khushur in salah as a condition for the success of those who pray salah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't just say that it is those who pray, you know, the, the, the believers who pray salah who will be successful. No, it is the believers who have khushur in their salah who will be successful. And this shows that the person who prays but does not have khushur in their salah will not be of those who are successful. Success is not guaranteed for that person. It is not promised for that person. So what is khushur then? Let's talk about that and inshallah reflect over it. So linguistically, khushur means to become humble and lowly and submissive. Khushur can be in the voice. So it is the, the softness or the stillness of the voice, basically when someone's voice is not audible, all right? It can also be in the eyes. So when the eyes are constantly looking down, this is khushur of the eyes. When a person is not able to look up, khushur is also in the limbs, all right, of a person. Uh, and that is the stillness of the body, all right, when the body is not moving. Khushur is also of you know of of the ground for example uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran that you see the earth khashi'atan you see that it is depressed and it is it it is um uh, it, it is flattened basically why because it's so dry and then what happens when rain falls you know it absorbs the water and it becomes soft right so khushur is basically when something comes down, it becomes lowly, it becomes submissive. And this is why it is used for humility. Now, our focus is khushur in salah. All right. Now, in salah, what does khushur mean? Khushur in salah is that the heart is humble before Allah. That the heart is submissive before Allah. And Ibn Rajab explains that khushur is basically the softening of the heart. And the heart is, is, is present, it is humble, and, and a person, uh, uh, their, their heart is very soft, all right? It's, it's filled with humility. Uh, a person is not lost in their own thoughts, all right? Uh, the, the heart is not distracted. It is not filled with the love, you know, for other things. 
And khushur begins with the heart. This is what, what Ibn Rajab mentions. Why? Because if the heart has khushur, then what's going to happen? The rest of the limbs will also follow. Right? Because the position of the heart in the body is like that of a king. Whatever the king does, the rest of the people follow. Right? So similarly, any whatever the king commands, the soldiers will do that. So similarly, whatever the heart, uh, whatever the state of the heart is, the rest of the body is going to exhibit that. So if, and, and you will experience this yourself as well, that if in your heart you are thinking about Allah, you are you have that fear or that hub, that love, right? And you have that raja, that hope, and you desperately want something, you know, and you're praying for it, then what happens? All of a sudden, your 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 eyes are filled with tears, right? You are uh, looking down your your body. It just you know humbles and relaxes. So this is what khushur in in salah is that it is basically the presence of the heart. It is the humility of the heart, and it is the 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 obedience of the heart before Allah. And khushur is not just in salah, it is also outside of salah. But it is more important in salah. Why? Because in salah, we are standing before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? And the person who has khushur in salah, then what's going to happen? They're going to perform their salah while fulfilling all of the conditions. Okay? And while while praying properly, being attentive and uh, paying attention to you know what they're reciting or what they're listening to, and this is the reason why the person who prays with khushur benefits from their prayer, and the person who does not pray with khushur does not benefit from their prayer. Abdullah ibn Umar radiAllahu anhu uh, said about the verse "Alladina hum fi salatihim khashirun" that when they stand to pray, they're focused in their prayer, and they fix their gaze on the place of sajda. All right? You need the eyes are looking where? On the place of sajda, not here or there. Okay? Sometimes we think that khushur is about crying and sobbing in salah. But that's not what khushur is. You can have perfect khushur without crying. Khushur is attentiveness. All right? It is focusing on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is making your heart present before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Ibn Qayyim says that khushur, in, how important is it in salah? He says that a salah without khushur is like a body without a soul. Okay? Like for example, imagine if there's a bird that is dead. Okay? Yes, it is a bird. Yes, it has beautiful feathers, but it is dead. Would you buy it as a pet? If you went to the pet store to buy a budgie, let's say, right? And you see that there's one that's dead, would you purchase it? No. What if somebody gave it to you for free? Would you take it? No, you wouldn't. Why? Because it has it has no value. So Ibn Qayyim said that, does the slave not have any shame that he uh, y y y y y would would one of you not have any shame in presenting a dead body as a gift to another person w would would you have shame doing that absolutely would you would you want to give a dead body as a gift to someone no you wouldn't so then why how can a person perform their salah and not care about khushur at all? Because praying salah without khushur is like offering a dead body as a gift. This is, this is an insult, right? It's not just that you're not going to be rewarded for your salah. This is like an insult. Because when you're praying salah, you know what happens? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala turns towards you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala pays attention towards you. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa told us that when we're praying salah, we should not spit in front of us. Why? Because he said, Allah is before you. 
Imagine. And if we are praying, we're saying what we're saying, we're doing what we're doing, but we, we, we're not thinking about Allah. There's no feeling. There's no love. There's no fear. There's no attentiveness. Then what kind of prayer is that? You see, khushur in salah is extremely important. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, he, he praises the people who have khushur uh, in, in the Quran. There's numerous verses in Surah Al-Anbiya, Ayah 90, Surah Al-Isra, 109, Surah Al-Baqarah, 45. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praises the people who have khushur in salah. There's a hadith in which we learn the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said that if anyone performs ablution, any proper wudu for the five daily prayers and offers them at their right time and properly observes the, the rukur and the khushur, okay? He mentioned two things. He properly performs the rukur, the, the bowing down, and the khushur, the humility. Then what's going to happen? There is a guarantee from Allah that Allah will pardon that person. Which person? The one who prays with proper wudu, proper rukur, and proper khushur. And if a person does not do that, there is no guarantee for him from Allah. It is up to Allah. Allah may pardon that person if he wants and punish that person if he wants. This is why those are the believers who will be successful. The Prophet ﷺ also said that a person returns after performing their prayer while only a tenth part of their prayer or ninth part of their prayer or eighth or seventh or sixth or fifth or third or half of it is recorded for them. You get it? A person performs prayer and how much of it is recorded for them? Only a tenth of it. Only a fifth of it. Only a third of it. Only a half of it. Which half? Which third? Which tenth? The part in which they had khushur. So it is only the, the part in which you have khushur that you are rewarded for. I'm not saying that the rest of the prayer is invalid. No, it counts. You have fulfilled your obligation. All right? But if you want to benefit from your salah in terms of reward and in terms of you know salah being a, a means of protecting you from uh, you know fahsha, from munka, protecting you against shaitan, then that is in proportion to how much khushur you have. So how can a person have khushur in salah? How? The number one thing is to bring your heart. And that is something that only you can do. There's nothing external that you can do. There's, you know, I, I can't tell you to wear something special or to recite something special or to pray in, in a special prayer, in, in, in a special place. To have khushur, you have to make that conscious decision that, hey, I'm praying now and I have to be attentive over here. I have to focus. And the problem is that these days we're so distracted, right? It's like we we swipe, all right? And we don't even know why we swiped. And then it's we, we get lost in our phones. Subhanallah. So quickly, we, we have such little attention spans, right? There's so many distractions. So you have to keep bringing yourself back. Keep bringing yourself back. Keep bringing yourself back. Don't let yourself wander away. And you don't, don't let your thoughts wander, wander off in salah. Bring them back. Bring your heart back. And of course, you have to pay attention to the external, right? Like where you are praying, is it noisy? How, how are your clothes? Are you hungry, right? If, if, you're, if you're supposed to eat, the food is there. Uh, or you have to use the bathroom, right? You have to fulfill your bodily needs before you can allow your heart to be present and attentive. So uh, the number one thing is you have to, uh, you have to bring your heart. And if you bring your heart to Salah, then inshallah, the rest of the body will also follow. Um, 
an- another thing is that to have khushu in salah, uh, uh, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, وَرَدِّلِ الْقُرْآنَ تَرْتِيلًا Recite the Qur'an with tartil. Yani in salah, recite the Qur'an with tartil. And tartil is to recite with proper uh, pauses. Okay? In, 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 in not too fast. Okay? Uh, and, and such that you are pausing properly. In the middle of the ayah, at the end of the ayah. And when you're reciting like that, you are reciting with attention. Right? When you are saying anything else in salah, know what you're saying. And as your heart gets distracted, bring it back. Uh, all right, I saw a raised hand. Uh, I, I want to take your uh, reflections from now. I, there's a few more things I want to share, but I think it'll be good if we keep this interactive. Uh, Solange, go ahead. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. Um, I, this reflection is a little bit different. I um, for about uh, th- for the whole time I was Muslim, pretty much. I um, I felt really horrible uh, reflecting on these ayat and um, these uh, hadith because I was struggling so much with focus, mm-hmm. and I really felt like a bad Muslim. And it's only in the last couple of years that I was diagnosed with PTSD. And it's only two weeks ago that my Muslim psychotherapist explained to me why I can't focus. And I realized I'm not a bad Muslim. I just have a disability, which I need to work with and understand. And Allah looks at our effort. Mm -hmm. And so I was crying during the appointment because it was so much relief. And so, yes, we, we, we need to keep struggling to focus. But that doesn't mean that Allah is not hearing us because, uh, and and I wanted to say this because for the people who are diagnosed with ADHD, for example, I recommend that you talk to um, a mental health specialist who is also a Muslim and and find out what your situation is and and what you can do to help improve your salah to work towards these uh, this beautiful goal. Jazakallah khairan for sharing that. I mean, what no. yet? Yeah. Uh, the thing is that um, a lot of us quit very quickly. We give up very quickly. And we think that uh, either I have khushur or I don't have khushur. Okay? If I have khushur in salat, then I've made it. And that, that means that I don't have to put in any effort anymore. And if I don't have khushur, I just don't have it and I can't be bothered. I'm just going to do my prayers and just you know, I've fulfilled my obligation. But that's not how it works. You have to keep trying. You have to, you know, in every salah, in every part of salah, you have to bring your attention, your focus back, right? So if if you are struggling, that doesn't mean that you're you're a bad Muslim. Some for some people that, you know, when they when they bring themselves back on focusing in their salah, maybe that attention will last for the, the duration of Surah Al-Fatiha. Well, Alhamdulillah, you, you got that. Now, uh, if, if you find yourself distracted in Rukur, then again, bring yourself back. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward you for your efforts, inshallah. Next person. Leela, let's hear from you, inshallah. Go right ahead and mute. That was Leela. If you're able to do so, if not, inshallah. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Assalamu alaikum. I thought uh, we were talking about hushu, so I noticed that I'm doing some things to connect with my prayer. So first thing I did was I alarmed my phone like five minutes early to prepare mentally because I'm such a distracted person. I get easily distracted. So I alarm my phone. I do wulu be even before the prayer is called so that I imagine the sins falling off my body, you know, things like that. I imagine it. And then I actually make myself smell so good. I prepare to meet my Lord. And then I feel like, okay, this is a special moment. I'm going to have a conversation with the God. And nobody's taking my phone calls but him. I mean, five times a day and not even leaving me behind, even 
late night waiting for me to make dua i mean i have to value this time so in that meaning i'm praying and i'm i learned the meanings of things that i was reciting only recently then i felt like oh my god this is such a conversation i have to take my time here in this conversation mm -hmm. so this is some things i did to improve my khushu and every time i'm looking forward to my appointment i'm praying for my appointment so wow. it's an amazing wow. feeling hope wow. it benefits someone jazakalla khairan for sharing that excellent tips Aisha Assalam Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and um I will first of all want to express my gratitude for this uh, noble community and only Allah knows how much I've benefited this Ramadan by engaging with the Al Maghrib community and the one thing that I'm looking at enhancing my khushu with is focusing on iyyaka na'budu wa iyyaka nasta'in and the meaning of it that it is only Allah we worship and it's only him we ask for help mm -hmm. and that's mm -hmm. i believe is helping me to be able to um, overcome the distractions in salah assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa alaikum assalam next person the next person is ayat aziz go ahead ayat assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah I just wanted to share uh, here on this platform that I, whenever I used to do salah, it used to be very burdensome for me because I used to think, oh, it's one more obligation that I have to do. But after a point in my life, I was like, let's understand what I read in salah because I attended a session with one of the sheikh and I started learning the meaning of the things that I recite in my salah. and i when i was reciting it again and again in my sala and one thing that stood out to me was idin as-sirat al-mustaqim ya la guide us to the right path i don't think there's any other greater dua than this because you're asking allah taala to guide you towards what is good and wala this whole session was just how i can improve my sala more than what it is right now and thank you so much for this whole session like i was literally crying through the whole session because of how beautifully you explained whole thing and i was like ya la please expect accept all of my prayers uh, with all the mistake that i've done until now but i just want to return to you each and every time and just submit to you and obey you throughout jazakallah wa alaikum assalam Next person. Assalamu alaikum. So my reflection is that I find difficulty focusing in prayer, but like the tarawih prayers are the most um ones I struggle like focusing in, even at the masjid. So like something I do is that like I clear my mind before I'll uh, go into pray for tarawih, and then. and then i just like it's it's that's a good thing it works for me thank you alhamdulillah very good very good and um, you see in these verses allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says alladhina hum fi salatihim khashi'un wal ladhina hum 'anil laghwi mu'ridun they who turn away from ill speech and ill speech laghw is basically anything that is useless that is of that is not of benefit to a person so the more you fill your life your mind with junk the more difficult it is to focus right to be attentive so turning away from these things uh, allows you to have better focus in sala next person assalam alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh when for me it will be a little brief that i would like to explain that for me the connection But the salah was always there, alhamdulillah. But obviously, as a Muslim, we all struggle with focusing on, like, you know, what we are reading and what we are doing. For the personal experience that I had, like, like the change salah for me was, alhamdulillah, when I um two point five years two years uh, before I learned uh tajweed from a very very amazing human being, may Allah bless her. I think so. Taj, uh, you know, when I got to know like the right way to recite Quran, alhamdulillah, at this age, I was able to so. Focus or when I was reading, uh, you know the uh, 
Quran in my prayers because I was like trying to articulate from the right point. I was trying to make sure that everything's good, which led to my prayers being so long. Alhamdulillah, that obviously because the, all my time was focused on the dua is fine, the ghain is coming from the right way. So this Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah changed my whole salah experience. And mm-hmm. I don't think so. I needed to put extra effort, um, you know, focusing because I was so focused on reading the Quran right and understanding and the tafsir lessons I used to do. So the meanings and the word, everything came together. And I think so that is not just the tweet and the sweet. I think so it comes with being a conscious Muslim and disciplining your way out. So uh, being disciplined and practicing what you're learning through, uh, you know, uh, every platform, every way. And second, uh, the Taraweeh would be a little difficult to focus on. But for that, Alhamdulillah, I just have this habit that I will take a shower. I'll get ready, put on perfume, put on very nice clothes and uh, do miswag and just like, you know, like whole get ready, even put on like, skin care so that I'm feeling like good about you know myself and then I would just pray and then I feel like it, it, it's just so beautiful you feel so amazing and just have a look at you and you guys this is an amazing platform that I learned 21 23 days it has been that we're learning and this is like changing me and I'm trying to implement all the reflections and all the lessons you guys are giving so that I can be improvising more rather than just trying to get all the knowledge noted on my you know diary just like you Okay. Uh, something you mentioned reminded me of a hadith. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he instructed that masajid should be built, all right, and that they should be cleaned, and that they should also be perfumed. Uh, why should masajid be cleaned and perfumed? Because if there's a space that is clean and smells nice you can have better focus. But if there's a space that is smelly, that, you know, it's it's not clean, you, you can't focus. You can't wait until you can just get out of there. So make sure that your prayer mat is clean. Make sure that your prayer clothes are clean. They smell clean. And in the masjid also, when you go, uh, you know, your socks should be clean. Your jacket, it, you make sure that it doesn't smell uh, and if you've had any food, uh, you know, like onions or something, then make sure you brush your teeth so that you have khushur and the people around you also, they can have proper khushur in salah. Uh, next person. Beautiful. Jazakumal. Our next person is Sakina from the UK. Go ahead, Sakina. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, first, I wanted to say Jazakumal khairan kathiran for the 360. MashaAllah. The May Allah reward everybody for all your efforts and time. I mean, the thing I was thinking of um, concerning Khushu, uh, from personal experience, I've seen how Allah saved me from all kinds of situations. And I feel through the Salah, turning to Him, He's the one who saved me. He is Al Qawi. He is Ar Rahman, Ar Rahim. He's the one who saved me. And I feel like there's such a comfort talking to him, praying to him, facing him, bowing to him, putting my face on the floor to him. And it is such a beautiful feeling that I know that I'm putting my face on the floor to you, O Allah, and I know you're going to look after me. You're going to protect me. You're going to look after whatever is happening in life in general. Next person. Brother Uthman from Nigeria, go right ahead. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa rahmatullah. Thank you very much for this platform. Uh, one of the points I have is uh, from my scholar. He was always advising that before you make the intention to go for ablution for a prayer, make sure that you have, start, you have already started preparing your mind towards Kushu because. The longer you pay attention to it, the better you are going to be able to achieve it. That's one. Secondly, from Sister Yasmin Mujahid, I learned that when you are doing some things, you have to live in the moment. So that moment you are praying, when you pay attention, you will be able to have kushu because you know what you are doing and you know you are paying attention to it. Then overall, my own understanding is this. Whatever you value, you have to pay a price for it. So if you decide to make the best out of it, then it is worthwhile the time you spend on it. Jazakallah khair. Oh, yeah. Jazakallah khair for sharing. 
part of living in the moment is to focus in the prayer that you are performing, right? Not on, uh, not that you're thinking about something that has already happened or could have happened or needs to happen. Next person. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Bismillah wa sawatu wa salam ala rasulullah. I would like to share um, about uh, about the time of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that there were companions complaining that uh, when they eat, they're not satisfied when they eat, when they're eating. Mm -hmm. And so the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said that perhaps you're eating separately mm -hmm. and, and that to eat together because there's blessing in eating together. So I was reflecting on that, that the Salah could be like that too, that perhaps we're praying individually or separately and that we could try to pray together and and establish the prayer together properly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and definitely praying together allows you to have more khushur because when you're praying on your own, you know that you can rush through your Salah. And you allow yourself to rush through salah. And um, but when you're praying together in Jamara, then you can't just go into Rukur whenever you want. Uh, so you're kind of forced to pray longer than you typically would, as a result of which you uh you have a chance to, you know, focus more. Inshallah. Jazakillah khairan for sharing. Inshallah. We akalahu khair. Next person. Before we go to the next person, it yeah. is physically hurting me, Usada, to to cover this topic and not to mention Sheikh Abar's mindful salah class that he's yeah, covered. Thank you. I was actually going to ask you to mention any any classes because it would be great. Yes, because this is this is like the universal Muslim experience, and I feel like salah is the one thing that you 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 know you that's a relationship you need to build for the for the, your entire life, and it's going to impact every single day of your life. And whether Abdul uh, Hasib uh, mentioned the chat, and he gave me permission now through through mentioning it, the, the some of the plug some of the gems from Sheikh Omar's course are life changing. I highly recommend if you guys get the opportunity to take it on Maghrib online. I don't know if even the registration button works right now, but it's Maghrib online slash mindful salah life changing no matter what wow. challenge that you have with your khushu he tackles all of them uh, a lot of people can attest probably in the chat who've already taken this already how transformative it is and how it helps you tackle whatever it is specifically that you're you're having difficulty with when it comes to khushu and salah so had to had to plug that because that, that class solves that problem it's excellent alhamdulillah uh, one last reflection and then uh, you can do the kahoot is that yes okay? it sounds perfect inshallah um i'll see if i can take a, a new name inshallah i think i saw oh no christina you you lowered you your hand give me one second i'll find you again Christina Aziz, go right ahead, Bismillah. Let's hear from you. Oh, alaikum. Um, yeah, I've really thoroughly enjoyed this uh, Ramadan 360, mind blowing for me. Um, although I've been a Muslim for a long time, um, only now I'm enrolled in um, Al Huda course, uh, four year course, and, and learning uh, the Quran because now I'm retired and I have the time. But me and my husband generally pray together. Uh, always as often as he's home I'm home all the time but as often and sometimes I get distracted in uh, when the especially the Duhar uh, and Asr Salahs are quiet I don't know what uh, surah he's re reciting and sometimes I'm reciting a different surah so do I recite a surah in in Duhar and Asr prayers when it's a, a quiet prayer or do I just stay quiet accepting that his dua because sometimes he will uh, say a dua that short and I have started a long dua and it's also confusing and um, you lose your focus uh -huh. yeah. but I'm so okay what, what I have learned is that when you pray behind a specific person you kind of get a sense of how long their qiyam is and how long their rukur is and how long their sajda is so accordingly uh, you know I, I adjust my prayer as as in what I'm going to read. Uh, but if, you know, in Zohar and Asr, of course you have to do your own recitation, right? You have to recite Surah Fatiha yourself and an, another surah after that in the first two rakara. You, you have to do that yourself also. Um, and let's say you are in the middle of a surah, right? Let's say you are reciting Qul A'udhu Bi Rabbin Nas and you have reached the third uh, ayah and he goes into Rukur. So then what do you do? 
you just that's stop your I'm recitation. Asking. I stop. Yeah. yeah and I you follow stop him. your recit Exactly. And that's yeah. fine. Okay. All right. That's fine. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you know, everybody is different. Some people find it easier to pray behind an imam. They have more khushur like that. Some people have better khushur when they're praying alone. Um, uh, but of course, for men, praying in jama'ah is, you know, necessary. Uh, for women, it is not. However, the reward is is greater, right? In when you're praying in jama'ah. So, inshallah, you can pray your sunnah prayers at your own pace, okay? Mm -hmm. However long you want, inshallah. Yes. Jazakallah khair. Wa iyakum. All right, inshallah, we'll conclude here. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Jazakum alaikum khair, Ustada Taymiyyah. That was Ustada Taymiyyah's Quran reflect on the topic of khushu. And of course, earlier we had Sheikh Ahmed Salim uh, covering the topic of submissive humility. I hope that you guys benefited from today's sessions and you guys are hyped, inshallah, for the Kahoot. Sorry, I could not help that that plug with Sheikh Omar's class. I also really benefited. I don't know if you uh, guys follow Sheikh Walid Basuni on social media, but he posted a video a few years ago about his outfit that he puts on for the last 10 nights and the way that he prepares himself for, you know, receiving Laytul Qadr. And mashallah, some of the advice that you guys have given about perfuming in the area, dressing really nicely, having a specific section that, that you have that for yourself or your ibadah, you know, like there's so many great things that you can do to, to build that relationship uh, with your ibadah during the last 10 nights, especially, and to build a little, a little hub for your ibadah. So I highly recommend you guys, uh, if I can find that video, I'll see if we can share that in Ramadan 360. It was super beneficial. And I'm glad that you guys have benefited from, yeah, you know, the, the content and from each other, mashallah, and your sharing and your transparency and your uh, openness, alhamdulillah. Um, it's on YouTube, Raghat says. Okay, awesome. We'll find it and we'll share it as well. Sweetness of Salah, that's another one. Let's jump in to our Kahoot for today. As a reminder, Kahoot is a quiz platform that is based on uh, you getting answers to questions that are that, that are available for you for multiple choice correctly as quickly as possible. Um, you go to kahoot.it as the website to, to join into the session, to join into the quiz. I'm just sharing my, my screen right now so you guys can see the game pin for today, which is 720-6287. If someone can just drop into the chat the link to kahoot.it. Uh, and I see people are starting to join in, alhamdulillah. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Please put your actual name so that we know who we, uh, who's accurately getting the prize, inshallah, because HS could be Hafsa something else as well. It could be Hamza. It could be a multiple things just to make it easy for you if you are the winner, inshallah ta'ala. We haven't run into any issues so far, but I just want to cover my bases, inshallah. Um, we've had some really good, uh, you know, people winning, mashallah, really good at participation in the last couple of cahoots, alhamdulillah. We try to do these once a week. We might throw in a bonus here and there as well, inshallah, this upcoming week so that you guys get a chance to, to practice your skills. We've got 67 people in the kahoot already. Again, it's worth trying, even if you're not, 100% or you're not, you don't remember all the answers. We try to keep the questions pretty uh, beginner intermediate. So inshallah, that'll be a fair chance. I feel like I need to put some restrictions uh, in terms of who can win, but I'm going to try to be, let's, let's see, let's see how it goes inshallah today. Um, I feel like current all access pass members, it wouldn't make sense for you to win an all access pass, but maybe you want to gift it to somebody. So I feel like that's fair still. Um, inshallah, you guys, whoever wins, it's a massive, massive, massive prize. I'm super excited that somebody will have access to this, especially because we haven't been able to make it public this Ramadan. And there's so many amazing things that we have in the plans for 2024 and so many things that you guys are contributing to make possible as well, inshallah, this Ramadan. So Jazakum Allah for that. I think we have we have over 100 people. No, I'm not secretly playing. <laughs> what are these allegations? <laughs> um, I'm too busy hosting it to play. Imagine. Um, but yes, Bilal, mashallah, our, our resident All Access Pass member, Raghad there as well, mashallah. Sister Nemo, many of you can attest to how amazing the past experience is. So we're above 100. I won't close the, or the room so you guys can continue to join, inshallah, if you're still wanting to or you ca catch it a little bit late. It's recommended to have this on a different device and to have the Kahoot on a different device as well so you can keep up or you can split screen it so you can keep up with us and keep up with the device. All right, Bismillah. Let's jump right in, inshallah, and let's see who's going to win this week's third week's Ramadan 360 Kahoot. So I'm going to kick start it, inshallah. And the first question is, let's see, let's see, let's see. Okay, it's building it up. Who killed Goliath? In the story, who killed Goliath? Was it Musa al-Islam? I was gonna, I was about to give it away just now. 
Uh, was it Musa al-Islam? Was it Isa al-Islam? Was it Suleiman al-Islam? Or was it Dawood al-Islam? You guys have nine seconds left to go, inshallah, to kick off. We're going to have a huge variety of questions. So inshallah, if you have some, you're, you're better in some areas and not so much in others, your memory is not so good, but your knowledge is, inshallah, you'll be good. Most of you got it. Dawood al-Islam was the correct answer. Let's see from the beginning who jumps onto the scoreboard. Okay, so we got brothers in the house. We got brother Umar, we got Maheen, we got Ruhi, we got Zainab, and we got Maria. Um, mashallah in the house congratulations to you guys for getting the first question correct the next question is how many people fought goliath the the, the responses are 3981 10000 or 313 let's see how many of you guys get this one correct inshallah you guys have 9 seconds on the clock once again this is about speed and accuracy so you want to be be correct but you want to be quick as well inshallah don't hesitate too long just go with your gut and that is correct. Oh, actually, so this was kind of close. People were kind of split, subhanAllah. The correct answer was 313. This was not a trick question, inshallah. So let's see what that did to the board right there. Ooh, oh, oh, okay. Bilal, back, Bilal is on the board. Umar's still on there. Maryam made a jump. Zainab and Ruhi are still holding on. MashaAllah, let's see how we do, how we fare for the rest of the 15 questions we have remaining. The word shuja is mentioned in the Quran. Is that true or is that true? false this was covered in one of our sessions in this past week let's hope you guys remembered it i think the instructor specifically mentioned that it wasn't was or wasn't mentioned in the quran bilkis all you see are colors you got to make sure that you have my screen showing as well as your screen uh so that you can see which is the which which color or shape it represents true or which represents false in this case obviously blue is true and red is false but um that's that's how you make sure that you can get the correct answer is you have to have one screen with my screen and one with your own if you're if you're uh, on a different device um the next okay perfect maria made a jump look at that bilal and omar still holding on to the board zainab and ruhi still on there as well let's see how that goes inshallah with the next question human action comes from foolishness wisdom both or none we threw in an easy one there hopefully you guys I'll get that one, inshallah. We have a mixture of questions, you know, dividing up the topics, dividing up uh, some of the, the 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 sessions that we've covered and some al-Maghrib knowledge as well. So let's see who gets these correct, inshallah. And with 111 answers, so some people have joined, the correct answer was both. There is a mixture of foolishness and wisdom. The correct answer was both. Most of you got it. Um, sorry for those who click, click foolishness. I'm not sure what you were thinking, but most of people got it. Mashallah, that's good to see. Omar made a jump. Ulaid made a jump. Maha made a jump. Maryam still on the board. And Suri is on the board now as well. Mashallah, great to see familiar names making it onto the leaderboard. Who is the first person to be shaded under the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? The answers are the martyr, the just, the charitable, or none of the above. There are multiple people you guys have heard. Who, are, who receive shade on the day of judgment on the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what is the correct answer to the first person to be shaded? Is it the martyr, the just, the charitable, charitable, or none of the above? With 107 answers, zero seconds left. And the correct answer was the just. Okay, so that probably disrupted quite a few things on the board. Let's see, let's see. Whoa, okay, so Mariam's made it to the top. We got Rabia, we got Ariba, we got Maha, and we've got Fatima from Houston. I remember I remember Fatima from before, from Houston, Texas. Jazakallah, if we're putting in your location as well. Let's see what that how that changes throughout. This is anybody's game until the very end, as you can tell. Modesty and blank are companions. When one is raised, so is the other. I remember sending this to, <laughs> to a group chat, to a family group chat after the session that we had this in. When the Sheikh mentioned this, modesty and salat are companions, modesty and charity are companions, modesty and faith are companions, or modesty and all of the ones that we mentioned are companions. And yes, majority of you have got it. Great valiant effort from everybody else. Faith was the correct answer. Modesty and faith are companions. When one is raised, the other is raised as well. Maryam still holding on to her lead. Ariba still on the board. We kicked all the brothers off, subhanAllah. Brothers, you can still make a, a recovery, inshallah. Maha, Fatima. Still holding strong, mashallah, tabarakallah. Okie dokie. Um, I know some of the questions are a little bit tricky. Which year was Al Maghrib established? Let's see who is, who's been doing the math, who's been loyal to us so far. We have 1995, we've got 2000, 2001, and 2002. Which year was, was this tricky enough? I feel like this might have been too easy. I did this question actually, just to throw things in. Let's see if every, let's see. Oh, it was a little tricky. It was a little tricky. So it was 2002. This is our 22nd year. 
coming up on our 22nd year in summer, it will be officially 22 years. It was 2002 that we were established as an organization. Alhamdulillah by Sheikh Muhammad al-Sharif, um, Thank you to everybody else who, who almost got it right. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Ariba, Rabia, jumping, jumping. Maryam still holding on. Fatima, remember, you got to get that number one, that coveted st stop to, uh, spot to be able to get the prize, inshallah. But Bilal is back on the board. That's great to see. Holding it down for the brothers. Let's see question eight of 15, what we get. This is a multi-select. So there's a couple of answers that are correct and a couple of answers that are wrong. You get either of them, you're good. So which classes does Sheikh Omar Suleiman teach with a Maghrib? He teaches multiple these are the ones that we've had recently in the circulation. Uh, of course, our Amagri marketing team is always so witty with their with their wordplay. So sometimes it can be kind of confusing. These all kind of sound like somewhat Amagri classes. Let's see if you guys get it. Okay. Okie dokie. So I know forgiven, as, as convincing as that sounded, is not correct. But behind the scenes and faith or fake are both online classes that shift. Uh, Omar Suleiman teaches with Al Maghrib and behind the scenes is actually available for you guys to register within your portal, I believe. So check that out. It's a beautiful class to be taking in conjunction in, with Ramadan. And let's see who got. Oh, there you go. There you go. This is where being a student, current student does give you a bit of an edge. So Fatima and Bilal have jumped up. Ariba, Rabia and Maryam still on the board, which is amazing to see. Let's see. Nine of 15. We're getting closer towards the end. This is more questions have been answered than have not been. So modesty means two. Dress properly, behave properly, be sincere and conscious of Allah in our interactions with the opposite sex or all of the above. Again, we give you some, some are slightly tricky. Some of them are very clear. Some of them are a little, could be either or. So you go with your gut, go with your gut, speed and accuracy. Remember are the name of the game. And mashallah, most of you got that correct. I know that could have been confusing. Most of you caught that great for, good job for all of you let's see how the board looks like okay so Fatima and Bilal still holding the, Bilal made a really good recovery mashallah with some of those questions Rabia made a jump Ariba and Maryam still there but it's still anyone's game because you know we like to, to switch things up alhamdulillah um in Surah Nur which group is mentioned initially uh in the instruction of modesty is it men or is it women is it women or is it men who are mentioned initially when the instruction of modesty comes down Let's see who gets that correct. I know we hear we, we we had a whole session on this topic, so hopefully you guys are paying attention. I believe that was the Sheikh Sad's name. Inshallah, let's see with the countdown who made that scoreboard. And oh, people got confused because both were mentioned, but who is mentioned initially? The correct answer was men. Men were mentioned to lower their gaze first before the instruction about khimar was mentioned for women. So let's see who gets, let's see if there's any disruption there. Okay, Fatima and Bilal still holding on, but Ariba, Maryam, Maha all had a switch up, mashallah. Lovely to see that the board is still moving. Question 11 of 15. How many words in the Quran describe justice? Is it one? Is it two? Is it three? Or is it four? You guys have heard them throughout the course of Ramadan 360. Hint, it's more than one. It's plural. So let's see who gets that, inshallah. Sorry, I haven't been keeping up with the, the chat as much. <laughs> yes, Zainab, when you click too fast and you don't see all of the above. I hate that that happens as well, subhanAllah. And the correct answer was two. There are two specific words in the Quran that describe justice. And 23 of you got that correct. That was a disruption. I'm kind of curious to see what happens to the board now, subhanAllah. Whoa, all righty. I hope that wasn't a tricky question. I didn't make that question. But Maryam made a jump. Bilal still on the board. Fatima still holding on to number two. Ariba and Ruhi making it back on top, mashallah. But still, it's anyone's game. Anybody could trip up, press the wrong thing. Don't get too, don't get intimidated. You still have time to win if you haven't made it to the board yet. What is the meaning of courage? Is it that you're not afraid of anything? Is it that you do the right thing even if you're in a scary situation? Is it that you're hesitant to take risks? Is it that you're avoiding difficult situations to stay safe? What is the meaning of courage? Again, we got some easy, got some complicated, got some switcheroos up in here. We got 107 of you that have made it. Let's see who gets that correct. And 94 of you did. Alhamdulillah, that was hopefully not too scary of a question. We got everybody still holding on, but Roxana has made it to the top. Ruhi, got to click a little faster, just a little bit. SubhanAllah, to make it onto the board, we'll see you back on hopefully, inshallah, very soon. So let's see what that board looks like after the next question. If you teach the Quran and Sunnah to others, but you don't follow it yourself, that is called, you're right. You can teach it and you don't have to follow it yourself. Sometimes you're just trying to be an educator. Is it your obligation that you teach it to others, but sometimes you may not follow it, you should still teach it. Is it hypocrisy? Uh, if you teach it and you don't follow it, is it both of the above? I'm assuming both of the above would be your right and your obligation. So let us see 
who gets this question correct? And, oh, wow. Okay, I'm glad that, that this was not too, too confusing here. But the correct answer was hypocrisy. If you teach the Quran and Salah, but you don't follow it, that makes you a hypocrite. Um, may Allah protect us from becoming those who are, uh, you know, becoming of the hypocrites. I mean, Maryam, Fatima, Bilal, Ariba. Okay, so this is this is a little st stable still. Let's see if something shifts, inshallah, in the last few questions. Uh, maybe no trick, trick questions. Well, no promises. There's a piece of flesh in the body. If it becomes good, the whole body becomes good. If it becomes spoiled, the whole body gets spoiled. What is that flesh? Is it your liver? The doctors in the house? Is it your brain? If, is it your, your, your sound thinking? Is it your heart? Is it everything that... These three work in conjunction. If they're working well, then the whole body is well. If it's just one or the other, it's not. Let's see who gets the answer correct. Inshallah, one second left. And the correct answer was the heart. Again, hopefully not too intimidating of a question. Mashallah, most of you guys got that. So that's amazing. Okay, we're still okay. Mariam's still holding on to that lead, but there's still an opportunity. One final one to disrupt it. Not that I don't want you to win, Mariam. All love here, inshallah, for that beautiful all access pass prize for the rest of the year of 2024. Should I not take into consideration of that person for whom even the angels display their modesty? This is a quote from the Prophet. Who is this quote about? Is it Abu Bakr? Who is it Umar? Who is it Ali? Who or Uthman? Who I hope that you guys have. We're listening when this was quoted and mentioned in our Ramadan 360 session. Once again, we Sheikh said on the topic of modesty. Let's see who got that. Okay, that was a little tricky for some. The correct answer was Uthman Radhan, who let's see who made it to the scoreboard. Did anyone disrupt Maryam? Who made it to third place? Who made it to... to okay, Bilal holding it down for the brothers, keeping them on the scoreboard. Fatima making it to number two. And number one, big surprise, shocker is Maryam. Congratulations, Maryam, on winning today's Kahoot for Ramadan 360. Mabruk on winning the all-access pass. Please, I know there's probably 50 Maryams. Please be honest, whichever Maryam reaches out to me in Ramadan 360, uh, you can message me on Instagram, uh, sorry, on Telegram, or send a message to our info at amagrib.org and they will hook you up with your prize. Mabruk. Maryam A, it's you. Okay, awesome. Just send me a quick message with your email address so that we can hook you up. That is an amazing, amazing prize. And inshallah, we'll have another opportunity to win sometime either in this week or next week for sure for our next week's Ramadan 360 Kahoot. With that said, let's close off inshallah. Tomorrow we have Usada Yasmin Mujahid back with us. It's going to be a great session on the topic of truthfulness. Last few sessions remaining before we close off the month. Please keep us in your thoughts please keep donating generously and and supporting the last 10 nights campaign just a reminder if you just a quick clarification if you joined in the last 10 nights and it was already nighttime for you and it passed the window that they they, they put in the donations then most likely it went to the next night so if you didn't see a, a, a charge last night don't stress a few people reached out to me you should start seeing charges now as it goes into your evening time inshallah hopefully that clears up any of that confusion if you're still having issues please do reach out to us and let the customer service team know. But it looks like everybody is, is working relatively smoothly now. Alhamdulillah. Congratulations once again, Maryam. We'll look forward to seeing you guys tomorrow. A shout out once again to the folks who make Ramadan 360 possible. HHRD in the US, Forgotten Women in the UK, Islamic Relief in Canada. Please keep supporting them and supporting us as we finish this month strong. We'll see you guys very soon. For now, take care. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, everyone.